It shook me, eh? I'm just carrying on a bit. <laughs> <laughs> You're an animal. watching us on YouTube or listening to us on your favourite podcast platform. Welcome back to the Talk Hub Podcast. G'day guys and welcome back. This is a very special episode of the Talk Hub Podcast. G'day Fizzy. How you going mate? I'm doing well mate. I haven't seen you in a while. Yeah, you've been busy. Uh, Actually, yeah. I've been busy too. We've both been busy and we've had technological difficulties with a camera taking a shit and a <laughs> laptop taking a shit. <laughs> <laughs> so we've had a little bit of a hiatus, but uh, for those of you who are listening on an audio-only platform, you can't see, but we've actually got two special guests with us. The first guest, Jeff. The so, first ones ever. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, first So let's hope we don't trip over. No. We can get some more afterwards. <laughs> Well, the first one probably needs very little introduction, a bit of a, a legend um, among notoriety of the forum days. The good old forum days. I'm looking forward to getting into this too. For sure. Do the letters Cal SBL mean anything to you? I remember. G'day, Daryl. Thanks for joining us. No problem at all. Um, and you've also brought a little friend with us. Would you like to introduce him for us? Yep. We have Troy here, who's the owner of Psycho Ute, who's um, from Perth. I'm obviously from Orange in New South Wales, so just come over to catch up and do a bit of a bit of an intro on the ute yeah and um yeah troy's the owner of it and he's the one that's funding the project so yeah but daryl's the brains and the um and the and also you know the handy work yeah the grunt the scenes, work mate i'm just a poor guy i just say <laughs> it just gets phone calls or you know <laughs> text messages or emails and say troy i think we should do this or hey uh, any chance we can buy this or all that sort of stuff like that it's like Okay, Daryl. No worries, mate. I'll leave it to your cable lands. You know? Well, is there any other time where it goes the opposite way as well? We go, hey, Daryl, I'm really thinking. And he goes, no, I don't think that's a great well, idea. Oh, yeah. It's, yeah. Funny, you say, it's <laughs> yeah. funny you say that, mate. As in when you've got two, you know, two minds on the same, on the same goal, on the same path, mm. um, we have aligned pretty well, don't we, Daryl, with yeah. some, some of our thoughts and stuff like that. It's more both like, from the same era. So Yeah, 100%. Both from the same sort of that's era. That's the main key. Yeah. You know, because we're in, how old are you, Daryl? I'm 44. You're, what, you're only a couple of oh, years. 30 ish, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Was that born in 1930 ish? <laughs> yeah, it feels like it some days. Yeah. We'll probably no, get. I'm only a couple of years older than Troy, but we've both have been in the scene for 25 odd years. Yeah. Probably more. Yeah. Well, we'll probably get to the psycho story in, in a little bit, but yeah, I wouldn't mind sort of going back to the origins, I guess. Um, we'll probably start with you, Daryl. Yep. Give us a bit of a rundown of of who you are and, and sort of how you came to be. How um, you ended up here? Where'd, how did you end up in this shed? In this shed. <laughs> how far back do we want to go? Um, I Pretty much from when I finished school, I started playing around with car stereos. Um, and that was in Perth. Um, I worked on a crow fishing boat in Ledge Point for a season. Um, and then I had four months the off season where I had to do something. So I went out to Kalgoorlie for four months and sort of started getting to know the young blokes out there, being only 18, 19, and getting into the car scene and um, fitting stereos up. Every time I come back to Perth, I would go and see the guys at Audiocom and you know buy more stereo gear or whatever. And um, sort of got to know Nathan and that pretty well there. And they said to me, I obviously knew I was in Kalgoorlie, and they said, oh, we're you know, going to put a store out in Kalgoorlie. Um, at that time, Audiocom was phones and car stereos. Yep. So, they, um, I went to find the phone store, which was, sorry, Audiocom at that stage was only phones. And I went to see them and said, you know, when you're putting stereos in here, and they asked me, said, do you want to get something done? I said, no, I said, I want a job fitting. So if there's anything available. And um, they told me where the shop was going to be and they sort of set it up and I, they'd moved it into cash converters at the time. The stereo and the phones were two separate parts. So... They put the car audio into the cash converter, so I went in and saw them, and they were looking for an installer. Um, and the owner of the business said, "Come back next weekend. We've got the boys from Perth coming up. You can, you know, meet them and show them what you can do, and yada yada. And um, you know, we'll talk about doing a job from there." So, at the time, I had a VR Commodore with all the boot fitted out, and they had a X 
VS Melrose, I think, race car, which yeah. was a replica, and they had all the stereo in that. And they turned up with that, and I sort of had a look through it and went, you know, it's, it's pretty cool, but it's nothing that I really can't do. And um, I sort of got to talking to the owners of the, the business, and he said, oh, you've got your car here, and you have a look. And I said, yeah, yeah. So I opened the boot up, and they looked in and just went, uh, yeah, you've, you've, you've got the job. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I started working there sort of part-time-ish, and um, I was actually doing relining on the mines at the time. Yeah. Ended up going full-time fitting, um, and selling and fitting through there, and then, um, yeah, that was the backstory on how I started with car stereos. And that yeah. was sort of through the golden era as well. So, fun, funny story, I worked for Audiocom as well in yeah. Bunbury for, for a few years, so I, was, I sort of know all the, the fellas that you're talking yeah. about. And um, I sort of, I guess I caught the tail end, whereas you were sort of through the, the boom of it all, weren't yeah. you? Yeah, well, we really kicked it off in Kalgoorlie. There's, there's nothing else to do out there. So everyone yeah. had cars that were easily you could fit car stereos too it's not today where they're modern stuff with all cam bus and you just can't do anything with them it's, yeah it's, it's logistically it's either expensive or dangerous yeah um so back then it was simple you know lancers or clean cruisers or commodores that you just you go nuts with yeah and disposable income out there once if someone does it someone else wants it and then it just snowballed from there so that was sort of where cattle sbl came from was kagali sbl because we used to build the cars take more to perth to the comps yeah um and absolute whitewash all the comps in perth didn't matter what show it was we just we'd drive down for the weekend a group of us we just go and have a bit of fun you know it wasn't serious competition but but we had nothing else to do in kagali so yeah we just cruised down to perth and um go and have fun and met through a lot of people through that yeah and then eventually just took over uh started doing my own business just selling uh sorry just fitting and yeah. then, then um the later part started selling stuff as well um and then 20 12 i basically pulled the door down and moved to orange to well to get to go and live with the missus basically i had no plans to do anything over there the only thing i could really do was go and work in a panel shop and strip cars there was no car audio there still isn't car audio scene in orange to sort of try and pick up on yeah there was a couple of shops but they don't really install anything and most of the kids over there don't have the money to waste like Kegley, so yeah i knew that wasn't really going to be an option and like you say i think the cars now that people are running with they've all got sort of different platforms about them where it's it's not as easily customizable no, anyway so definitely not now it's a lot more work to put a decent stereo in newer modern cars it's yeah. not unavailable but it's but it's um it's something you need to be doing every day to keep on top of to understand the systems and how to actually do it yeah so i dropped in and saw nathan yesterday at soundwave and the stuff they've got on the shelf now and the stuff they were doing is just it's nothing that I was ever doing back 10 years ago. It's, nah. it's crazy how much it's sort of changed just to be able to keep up with the modern vehicles. But then it's it's also seems to you, well, down there doesn't seem to be a limited market, but everywhere else just seems very quiet compared to what they're doing. Yeah. So you say you're in a panel shop in Orange now. Is that what yeah, you're doing? Yeah, I've got a job with John Zalukovic Smash Repairs. Um, I just turned up at the start of January in 2013 um, and said, you know, have you got any positions for a, for a stripper? Um, <laughs> not, not and you sure. got your glitter out and said <laughs> absolutely well they said we need someone to pull cars apart but that's not what I asked about but yeah. <laughs> no so yeah they said you know we'll do a two week trial and um, he said you know what can you do I said I've got no trade no qualifications for anything I said but you know I can do auto sparky I can do um, stripping cars and yada yada um, so they said yeah we'll chuck you on for two week trial and I, as far as I know I'm still on a two week trial I've never been told any different to <laughs> not come back longest two weeks ever but, yeah, just 11, keep rocking up 11 and a half years later I'm still there and still um, yeah, now we're building unveiled cars for Summonats which is a, I don't know if I'd call it a dream but it's not really what I sort of saw myself doing but it was an inevitable step from where I started being able to do every aspect of a car um, I can paint, but I don't paint. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to paint. It's a crap job. <laughs> but, yeah, it's um, to be able to do, you know, auto-electrical and having the stereo background from being able to build stuff with wood and then doing the trimming um, and then got to now we're doing panel beating and being able to do smoothing out engine bays or, you know, using bog in specifically the ute, building stuff for that. It's just to be able to shape stuff and make it look like it's, you know, doing the custom stuff, it's a... It's just another set of skill set that I've acquired that helps me build whatever I want. Do really. what you do, yeah. And you had a fair bit of success at Summon House this year with, uh, was it Tonne 871? 671. 671, yep. sorry, yep. yes. Yeah, so that was a, a four-year-ish four build, I think. 
um, was a local guy that always, his dream one tonner, wanted a white one tonner. Um, and we were, we went through about 30 or 40 different pearl white colours to <laughs> find one that he wanted. Eventually found one that looked really nice and we, we knew it wasn't really going to work the way that he wanted. Um, but it's the sort of thing where unless someone sees it in person, you can't really, you can't translate it on paper or in, in words. So we did some spray outs and showed him the colour that he'd chosen and sort of put it up on some panels and he just sort of stood there and looked at it blankly and we're like, it's not going to work, mate. I said, it's a, it's a panel with flat panels, oh, sorry, a car with flat panels. Like you don't get that pearl. Um, it's a show car, so it's majority of the time it's going to be inside. Mm, if there's no yeah. light on it, no sunlight, you're not going to see the pearl. No. Um, so it's, so like that, it's kind of like that Fuji white that they put on all the skylines, right? It's got a whole lot of depth and complexity, but yep. it needs all of that panel. It needs direct sunlight and yeah. the curves to be able to see it. So yep. we, when we showed him and he sort of looked blankly and said, you know, what do we do if we don't go white? Um, the interior had already been basically built. So it was a, the, it's the, obviously the, the reddish sort of colour, uh, croc skin, everything, the seats had already been done. So we were limited to what colours we could use to make the interior still work. Um, we'd seen this reddish colour on uh, being in the industry. You see a nice colour and you, you grab yeah. the VIN number and the code and you just put it in the aside for a, for a project, something that you might want to use one day. Um, so we had that one in mind and we did a spray out on a, a guard that we had spare and um, told him to come down and have a look at it, took it out in the sun or in inside and he just fell in love with it straight away and we put it with the colour in the interior and it just... It's not something you'd pick without knowing it, yeah. but when you see it finished and in front of you, it's like, that could work. So not a single person has not liked the colour. Um, so that's that's worked really well in our favour, but it was just such a... A big change going from picturing we were going to have this white one tonner for <laughs> four years to I think it was only probably a few months out that we decided on the red and it was only I think a month or so six weeks before summer nights we actually started painting oh wow so it was strange to go from a whitish greenish um, primer ute to black for blocking it and then to red and it was a completely different ute to seeing it finished to what we'd been building for the three and a half years <laughs> but yeah to get it to get it done and uh, we did um, 300 odd hours over Christmas in nine days between three of us just to get it to summon that's finished that's wild so mm. it but looked look finished but it still hasn't been filled with fluids or run yet yeah um, okay. in theory put fuel in it it will start and run but we need a spanner check everything on it um, mm. so I've still got a bit of wiring stuff to do to it but we committed to getting it to summer that's looking finished um, and we told him that it wouldn't be driving which ultimately didn't make any difference because it was going to be on stands and all weekend in there if it got pushed in pushed out it wasn't going to make any difference didn't need to be driving he wasn't going for grand champion or anything so we um, yeah we made his deadline but the downside of that is didn't we got Christmas day off and that was it so <laughs> I think I saw an interview with him and broads on the street Yep. Uh, on the Summer Nats or the Street Machine channel, one of the two, and um, he said he still hadn't even sat in it at that no, point. So no, no one had sat in it. We got it to Summer Nats. <laughs> we put the seats in it a couple of days before, and uh, we pushed it outside on the, I think it was on New Year's Day maybe, um, and got a couple of photos, and it was overcast, so we couldn't even see it in the Summer oh, no. We hadn't <laughs> even seen it in the sun, up and even up until I think mid-January when the second show was. No one had seen it in the sun. We'd seen the colour or we'd seen parts out in the Under sun, lights, but not a complete yeah. ute out in the sun. So the photos and videos we got, it was overcast. It just did nothing for it. Um, but yeah, he hadn't, when we pushed it in the trailer, you couldn't, you can't get out of the car once it's in the trailer. So we dragged it in the trailer on the winch and pushed it back out again. So I had no reason for anyone to actually sit in the seat. It was, just, <laughs> it was funny. That he obviously still hasn't driven it yet. We've still got to finish it. But for now, he's just happy to be uh, taking it to shows and putting it mm. in the trailer and pushing it in and out of the trailer and doing what we can so well top 20 at summer that's certainly nothing to sneeze at no we we've had top 20 with a um a 510 datsun coupe um five or six years ago that we built as well which was never it wasn't never built as a to that it was built to that standard but it was never built with the intention of being on display as that standard yeah it was just being built the way the owner wanted um the owner was in a wheelchair so we had to do a lot of um, adaptions to make the hand controls look something that was you know of an unbiased sort of standard um, even the tonner now was never was, was never set out to be built an unveil elite sort of standard it was always going to be a show car um, but it was never going to be 
we weren't aiming for top 20. It wasn't going to be a, not even a top 60. It was just build the ute that he wanted, that he always wanted. Yeah. Um, the more we sort of got through it, the, the opportunity for me and Ben, who built the majority of it, to show our skills and ha- not really have any limitations on what we wanted to do. We wanted to build it to be, you know, of an elite level. Um, but the downside of that is we probably did a lot of the work in our own time, not really, Yeah. you know, it, it's not that's not the sort of job that you'd go to build to make a lot of money out of retirement. No, that's custom car stuff yeah. in general, isn't it? There's yeah. so many hours that just don't go accounted for. Yeah. And it's the guys that are doing it like <laughs> you, like it's a passion. Yeah, you know, and so. that's what this was for me and Ben. Was just, it was a passion. It was something that we had the opportunity with a blank slate because t- the, the cabin chassis literally got dragged out of the wreckers. So his original one that he had, it was that they'd done that much welding on it, the chassis was twisted and bent, and we could not get anything to fit. It took six of us to lift the, the bare cab. It took six <laughs> of us to lift the cab. They'd put that much extra steel on it to try and make it flat panels and everything. We couldn't even move it. Unreal. Wow. The two of us can lift the cab now. Yeah. And the chassis had all this extra steel and crap in it. It was just... So the more we tried to do, the worse it got. And we went to the wreckers to measure up a standard chassis to try and get the lines right. Um, and yeah, Ben walked in the chassis, into the wreckers and found this chassis and cab and he sent me photos and he, I said, so that's better than the one you got. He goes, <laughs> I know. He goes, I think I'm going to tell Gary we're just going to start from scratch. I was like, well, you can tell him. I ain't. <laughs> <laughs> but how, so, ra- how random is it even to find like cabin chassis of a car that old in the wrecking yard? Yeah, the cab was yeah. perfect. It had a couple of dents. Um, the, the, the normal spots for rust around the rinse screen underneath the seals and that, there was nothing. It was That's incredible. crazy. That's what I was going to say. We got a blast it stuff. And it's... It, we could not have got a better. Wow. It had a couple of dents. Like it was an ob- obviously a farm ute because the chassis rails were just solid caked with red dirt. We stood it up in the forklift and shook it out and I filled two normal buckets just with red dirt out of the chassis. So <laughs> I don't think I'd ever seen any salt water or anything. So that it was like a lot. It was like a tomb for the rest of the car. All the red dirt just protected it from well, the we elements. We kept it in the bucket. We told him we we're going to put it back in. But, he didn't say <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's, so that's the tunnel. So yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Troy, tell us a little bit about yourself, mate. I've, Kurt and I have only just met you today. We, we don't know a hell of a lot about you, mate. So um, give us a bit of a rundown of, of who you are and, and sort of how you come into the car thing. Realistically, it probably all comes down to the country town that I grew up in, good old Bum Vegas, Bumbury. Um, (laughs) Anybody that's been to, uh, back in the early, you know, late 90s, early 2000s, that cars were a huge part of Bumbury and a huge part of people down here. Back in the day, you know, the bog lapping around the main streets, um, you know, nice cars, lowered, exhaust, rims, and then you had the back beach scene, mate, cruising around or just or catching up with people, you know. That's how I met a lot of a lot of friends over the years. Um, and going back to the back beach thing, there used to be uh, double lanes down the back beach, yeah. which used to be prime for drag racing, Cor- but now, then they redeveloped it and it's all, it's all gone now. It's no good. 100%. And then there was that one time when they actually had legal drags they did yeah, yeah, they had, yeah. i don't know if, yeah once the blue light drags yeah 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 that, that was that was back in the day but yeah that's how i got that's how i got uh, wrapped up in cars um plus also that street commodore magazine is that that was that mag that i just used to throth over you know when every yeah. month used to come out and you just look at those cars and think one day i want to buy one of them or build one of them or those sort of stuff like that it was street commodore and the auto trader the other two used to yeah. go down every month you know yeah. used to buy and yeah, that's i think that's, we're, we're all like that yeah, yeah I was gonna say, i'm pretty sure we've mentioned that on the potty a few yeah. times you didn't buy the <laughs> auto trader to look at the car to buy a car that was just to look at yeah what was yeah. available and dream about and then there was this i still remember there was this car yard up in perth called auto scene yeah mate the guys that used to run that the cars that they used to get the hsvs didn't matter hsvs or the commodores or the fords mate it was next level and i still remember i used to look at that website day in day out you know all the new stuff they still arrive you know so yeah that's how cars have always been you know just a part of part of growing up and part of who i am and still to this day mate they're this they're just a money pit and just yeah. a time wasting thing, you know. That we no, they're an investment. Yes, yeah. That's, that's, Some are. that's what our Not wives all. say. That's what we tell our wives anyway, you know. Absolutely. So yeah, you've if had you a buy few. the right ones. They're investments. I was yeah. gonna say you've had a few over your time. Um, do you want to give us a bit of a rundown on on the collection up to this point? Sort of the cars you've had come and go. Well, we've only got today, haven't we? Yeah. Oh look. <laughs> yeah. Realistically, I've had I've had multiple cars over the years. Um, I'll be honest with you is that I've only ever owned, you know, like pretty much holding with my thing. Um, to this day, I've only ever owned one Ford. Um, the rest have been Commodores and I've had a 
heap of Toyotas, you know, um, but they you know, work cars and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, I always thought having a car collection was the ultimate pinnacle, right? Um, but saying that is that because I love the early model Commodores, especially the VR VSs, they're my sort of my jam. Um, every time you used to, you know, start them up, there'd be something wrong with that with leaks, you know, flat tyres, batteries and all that sort of stuff like that. And then, then when you throw kids into the equation and, then, and work is that you don't get the time to spend with them. And as they're older cars is that you need to be able to drive them, keep them, you know, lubricated, etc. But then in the, in the flip side as well is that parts are so hard to find yeah. for these cars to fix. And then you've also got that, um, you've also got that um, thing in the back of their mind, if somebody hits them or something like that, how do I, how do I fix them? How do I replace that? Because you get attached to cars. It's, it's, it's random. If you're not a car person, you wouldn't understand. But most people probably, you know, out there in, in the car scene, they're like, man, you actually get attached to them, you know. And there's a few cars in my current collection that I will never sell. Um, it's funny, Daryl and I, our relationship started over, a, it, was, it was pretty much um, through Facebook, um, over one make and model of a car, which is a VS GDSR, the yellow one with the big wing. Yeah. So ever since Motivation, there was this one, I saw it at my, this particular car, the GDS GDR uh, Motivation back in the day, and I fell in love with it there. And then I always said to myself is that my goal was to, was to own a VS GDSR. Unfortunately, is that it took me 40, 40 years, <laughs> as it, to, no, probably not, because it was built in 1996, but it's taken me many, many years um, to purchase one of these cars. And I was so lucky is that my, my, my wife, um, actually bought me a VS GDSR when I was to, when I turned forty oh. four years ago. So that was like a bit of a bit of a present. Oh, right? yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. Does she have a sister? <laughs> <laughs> so it was always even in our even in our wedding, like in our my wedding vows and my medi- wedding speech, it was all about this make and model my car. My wife got sick and tired of listening to it, mate. So you know, so end up she ended up you know doing what she had to do to, to find this car. And then um, the reason the reason how Daryl got put into the conversation is that Daryl actually helped my wife find that car. Mm. Daryl and I have been talking about we talking about this make and model car for many many years because Daryl had a has currently got a, a replica that he's been building and, and he <laughs> and um, never finished. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's how that's how Daryl and I our friendship over just uh, common started. passion. Yeah, for passion the, yeah. for this VS GDSR, and then um, yeah. Getting back to my collection is at one stage I had uh, 14 HSVs. Um, currently, I've got uh, I sold I, I sold uh, yeah less than that. <laughs> I sold quite a few in the boom. Um, and the reason why I moved them on is because number one, space is one thing. Mm. Number two is that there was cars that I weren't what I was not attached to. I bought them as in as right place, right time. Um, so now, pretty much, I've just got I've got a couple of GDSRs, okay. I've got a, a Malu Ute that I bought brand new, a 2011 model that I bought brand new that I'll never sell. Pretty much, so that's a car that I'm, um, attra- you know. That's one you're attached to. Attached to, yeah. And then I've got I've got the Ute, um, Psycho Ute, and um, yeah, and I've got a, a VX right? Malu. Yeah, got, yeah, and I've got a uh, Clop Sport R8, a VX Clop Sport R8. That's pretty much it. And I'll be honest with you, is that I'm I'm actually I'm actually happy with that amount of cars. Yeah. Um, I don't want any more. I'm actually content. Those cars actually mean a lot to me. Um, and they're actually manageable having that many. Oh, that's Where, good. Whereas having any more, it's just, a, it's, just, it just, it's great. It's awesome, but it was just a lot of work. And when you like, mentioned, like, when it comes to work commitments, family commitments, and then, you know, the day-to-day of maintaining them and stuff like that, it's insane. And the cost of them to have that many, it's just ridiculous. Well, there's a reason why a lot of these car collectors have full-time sort of mechanical teams that yeah. maintain their collection, you know, yeah. or they go to museums where they're maintained. And yeah. it, to, to, to try and have a private collection would be a hell of a lot of work, yeah. particularly if you don't work in the automotive space. I'm assuming you don't work in the automotive no, space. No, I don't, no. Yeah. No, I don't. Um, but it's funny you say, I, I, I've got a mate, he works FIFO. He does the, the, the lifestyle, us eight and six, and he... He's a bit older than me, um, and he was that guy that used to come and help me. You know, he'd, he'd come and start them up. He'd make it get them ready for if we go into a coffee, cars and coffee, you know, and here you go, mate, can you drive this one down for me, you know? Yeah. And it gave him something to do. And also, um, he helped me with purchasing some of these vehicles, doing the negotiations. I said, he'd, he pretty much, you'd bring me up, Troy, how much do you want to pay? No worries, mate. He'd do the negotiations. He'd organise the transport of the cars back to Western Australia. 
But it was so funny, most of the cars come from the East, east Coast. I've pretty rarely bought any cars here locally. And they get sold, you bring them over and they get sold back to the East Coast. <laughs> yeah, it, it's random. But the amount of people you've met, I've met buying and selling cars, um, you meet some great people. Mm. Like, and because you've got such a, the same passion, the same interests, you know, it's, it's great. And there's none of these, you know, look at that, pe- look, look, look at that car. Why have you got that for? What's this? What's that? And it's like, man, you know, they'd actually help you find cars mm. or they'd actually, actually help you say, hey, mate, I've got a mate They're actually chasing that car, you know hook you up, this sort of stuff. And that's what I love about the, like the, car, the car scene. You I, know? Think, I think that's something that when you do deal in a particular niche, yeah. then you've automatically, because like you say, you, you're predominantly uh, around the VRVS sort, yeah. of, sort of era, yeah, yeah. you get the people that like that. And all, all of a sudden, it's the same thing with you and Daryl, all of a sudden you've got that thing in common Correct. straight away. So you can cut through the bullshit. Yeah, you know, yeah. You can cut through all of that. You don't have to do the dance. It's just like, right, we know what we're doing. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and you can notice the real ones, you know, like this guy's not going to fuck it up or whatever yeah, or do yeah. something stupid that yeah. us as a whole wouldn't really think is a good idea. So be like, you can feed them cars or whatever mm. or parts and stuff yeah. like that because, you know, a lot of people have a lot of genuine good parts yeah. that you're not just going to give to someone to smack on their shitbox car yeah. or whatever, you know. Yeah. You kind of, we're at that point now where you want to see them go on the right mm. type of cars. Yeah. And also, when it comes to cars, it's a, it's a thrill of the chase, isn't it? As oh, you yeah. like, say, so you, you hear about something or you've, you w- you've wanted something for all these years, and then you like, and then it's a hunt to f- try and find one. Um, it's like the the VS GDSR I've got right. I bought it off the original owner. Build number zero zero five. This thing is absolutely a plum, mate. These the the couple that I bought it off of bought it brand new. They went went over to HSV and did the tour and over, all that sort of stuff like that, mate. I got you know the jacket, I got the the wallet, everything that went with that car. Oh, excellent. And then I never, I actually never met the people. I've spoken to them. Uh, about the car I've never met them but their life was pretty much they're in Albany as well yeah they were around oh really their life was built around this one car so that's that's one that you did buy from WA yeah Yeah. actually one yeah well his wife did he did yeah yeah Yeah. Yeah, so that was one yeah when she she contacted me to try and find um, a suitable car and I knew that the the five was for sale was I don't think it was publicly for sale um, but I think somehow I knew that they were ready to shift it on to to go and travel or whatever it wasn't a um, and the, the price was very fair at the time um, it was probably the upper end of what the market was then um, it was right before the prices really went nuts yeah. so the timing was really really good um, they might be kicking themselves a little bit that they <laughs> sold it then but mm. it was I mean good money for, for what they paid for it they've had their what well, would have been 15 odd years more than that yeah, well, not nearly. S- yeah, well, I got it. Yeah, it'd well, be at least fifteen years that they would have had it. Yeah. So, and they drove it. It's got fifty thousand k's, I think, on it. Something yeah, like forty five. Yeah, forty five. Yeah, yeah, something so, like that. So, you yeah. know, they've they've driven it. They've got their their value out of it, I guess. Yeah. Um, and they loved it, and they took it to some shows, and they probably you know, got on a bit and decided that it was time to get to move it on to someone else and do what they wanted to do. I think they're retiring, man. That's why they were yeah. doing it, you know. Um, yeah. But getting. Getting back to one of my original statements is that um, that original, the car that I currently own was the one I saw at Motivation. Oh, and that, really? That was the that car. Was one that was always that, on display. Yeah. Yeah, 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 in the pavilion. Yeah, yeah. that's the one that I fell yeah. in yeah, love with. Yeah, it was with. always in the elite pavilion. Yeah, yeah so I remember. So how, when how, I knew that car and I knew I'd already seen it in person and I knew that it hadn't, uh, it had been kept original. Yeah. And it was, so I had no problem suggesting to his wife that that's the car that I personally would go and buy. Yeah. Um, it even smells new. It's weird. Like, it's 1996 model, and you yeah. open the doors up, and it smells new. Yeah. Like, I've, like I said, I've owned a lot of cars in my time, but I've never had a car that it's that age with that lesser kilometres and still smell new. Like, you think over time that that new smell would, would disappear, wouldn't you? Yeah. But you can literally open them doors and smell new. Like, Daryl was at my place yesterday, first time he's seen it in many, many years, open up the door, and even he's come in, he says, this thing still smells new. Yeah. It's funny you say that because every time we get in that ute over there, I've owned it for what, 11 years or more now for 12 years. Every time we open the door and get in it, Kurt will say the same thing. This car still it's, smells the it's, same. It's so funny Everybody that like that. your senses because that was the I bought that car when I was 18. So I thought I was pretty cool. Yeah. Supercharged, five litre ute, 18. So, and I remember when I first got in it, like I've paid the guy the money and I've got in it and got to because he didn't let me drive it before I paid for it, which <laughs> understandable. I was just turned 18. And that, so that just that smell that just never leaves that memory and the smell and I get in and it just comes back like it's just so cool. Yeah. So you really bought that? 
No, no, from Bunbury it was here, yeah. yeah. But he was originally in um, Meriden. So he bought the Brad who owned the Ute originally. Yep. Well, didn't, wasn't the original owner, but bought it before us and did the blower and everything. Yep. Um, he bought it from Perth, but he was working in Meriden on the railways, but right. he was sort of travelling between Meriden and Kalgoorlie a lot. Yep. Um, and that's because he was out that way. That's how he sort of formed a relationship with Mark's workshop, you know, put the blower kit on, et cetera, et yeah. cetera. But then he moved down south, which is, yeah, when, when yeah, Kurt purchased it. Yeah. yeah. That's a lot of case for a, a ute that smells new, so that's impressive. Yeah, well, I don't know if it smells new, but it just smells it the same. Smell, it yeah. just holds that yeah. smell. It's probably from the Devonish seats. There's it's probably psych- something in Yeah, in I'm not them. sure. <laughs> Psycho does it. Psycho smells like fiberglass, and that's only got 4,000 Ks on it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's, it's funny, getting back to um, buying and selling cars, right? These auction sites... As in buying them, you know, through Grays Online or buying them through, um, you know, Burns and Co. and all this stuff, I must admit, is that you look at cars from the East Coast and they look all good online. Um, I bought a couple and I've got them back here to Perth. I'm like, what have I bought? Yeah. <laughs> like sight unseen. And I even got, I bought one car that had log books and everything. And I, I got in contact with the HSV and made sure it was all legit and everything. But the log books and the car, didn't match. Did, like, they might have had the same... They might have had similar kilometres, but they were two different cars. Oh. Like, and it, through COVID was a big thing, man. People were putting, you know, whatever car online and trying to sell it for, you know, drug money, as they say. Yeah. Um, and they were getting it, but you were buying shit, you didn't even know what it was. Yeah. And that was the risk you took. Um, you know, and I, I, I still remember I bought this VR Senator, right? 215, um, leather seats... Um, it beaut- look, it looked good. From looked good on on the photos on the on the um, on the auction site. When it caught here, yeah, it looked looked good from afar. But yeah. then you look closer and like, man, this thing's had a few touch-ups over the years. You know, <laughs> like even my mate, uh, one of my good mates, he's a car broker, and he comes around. And he goes, Jesus, Troy. He said, mate, uh, I think that one's had, had a few. That one's had a couple accidents over the years. Like, what are you on about, man? He goes, check out that panel, check out that panel, and stuff like that. You know, it's, it was it was it was a buyer's beware, you know. And but when I sold it, when I moved it on, he said, mate, I was upfront and honest with the people and said, look, guys, this is this is how I bought it. Um, you know, all I did, I fixed up all the leaks and all that sort of stuff mm. like that, and then just and then moved it on, you know, because I always wanted to get it. I wanted to get my hands on a VS Senator, two fifteen, six speed. Mate, rare cherry as... black. No, I didn't. Oh. I, I actually didn't want to stop. <laughs> I've, oh. <laughs> must be go on, tell him, tell him, Kurt. I tried to buy one. <laughs> well, I had the opportunity to buy that an exact car like that in Perth. It was a cherry black VS Senator 215, it had twin throttles on it, how it breaks, like everything. It was 25 grand back in sort of the late 2000s. I passed on it, but I regret it every yeah, day, mate, we've, yeah. Like, I always try to get my hands. I, when, I, when I did my apprenticeship, one of the one of the owner's sons had this 215 VS Senator 215 six-speed leather sunroof, mate. I still remember him. He used to bring it around to the workshop just very frequently, mate. I, I remember the first day I saw it, I fell in love with it. I always wanted to get my hands on one. Mate, I've tried for years to find, not the exact car, but the same make and model, same you know, six-speed yeah. sunroof. And that was another car that I, I was trying to get my hands on to put in the collection. Mate, I've failed every single time. <laughs> As in, I've gone and look at cars, and they've just been—they're just—you just walk away. They're just buckets, you know. Yeah. Um, we never realised how rare those sorts of things were because they were kind of semi-popular back in that era. Like yeah. they were popping up all the time. Like I remember a friend, a mutual friend of ours, Dave. We went and looked at a VS Series Three Grange one day, mm. black, had the license plates on a Surum, a Triple X three five five, had the two fifteen in it, and it had the Devonish seats. Yeah. I've never seen a combo like it before yeah. in my life. He didn't buy it, and I, I'll never forgive him for that. But <laughs> I've never seen another one like he that. He never would have kept it anyway. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But like, you just pass on a car like that, and then you'll never see it again ever. Funny thing is, back in that era of the late nineties, when I first went to Kalgoorlie. And I think we're probably in 98, 99. And the first day I turned up, first week or whatever, I was driving around Kelly. I'd never been out there before. So I was just driving around, had my license, only 18, 19, whatever. Driving around and there's just HSVs everywhere. And I stopped at the servo and I got a drink and I walked back out and two GDSRs drove past following each other. And I was like, and they'd only been out for two years, if that. 
And I was like, where the hell am I? There's two GDR. Like, I knew what the car was. Mining and I money. knew they were rare. And there's just two of them driving down the main street in Kagali. I'm like, <laughs> what the hell? Because wasn't there, wasn't there a yarn saying that when it comes to HSVs, Kalgoorlie was the highest selling Kalgoorlie's HSV dealer in Australia. Yeah. yeah, I think between them and Shaq's yeah. in Fremantle. Yeah. I think yeah. Harley's more HSVs. Yeah, I Kalgoorlie think Gold, anyway. Golden City Motors back yep. in the day just killed it. Well, mm. I was in there all the time fitting stereos and roof screens and stuff for them. <laughs> so I knew them pretty well. And they, every... Every limited production model, you guarantee one would be in Kegley for sale. The Senator 300, of the 30 yep. of those. Yep. Walked in one day, there's one sitting in the showroom waiting to be sold. And I think it was only, I don't know, not even 10 years later, I was putting 10 grand's worth of stereo in that one as well with the airbags and all that. Like, people had no concerns about modifying them, even though they were very limited. Yeah, but it's like... But yeah. SB 6000s are around. Apparently, there was three or four GDSRs in Kegley at yeah, the time. Yeah, I, I heard that, yeah. Um, so I'd seen two of them, which I knew the numbers of, and then one later on, which I've... Um, I know the owner of in the eastern states now and the original long book actually has the address of the first owner oh. and it's Kagooli and ironically where the address was was two blocks away from where I lived in my caravan in the caravan park <laughs> and I never even knew the car was there I never even seen it so I don't know it's got very very low kilometres so I'd say you never drove it um, but then suppose there's someone else that's got one which I got the build number off but never saw it in person and it's parked in a shed next to a VK Group A that's never been driven as well um, and he bought them as kids' investments. Mm. So I'd really like to go and see them, but I never got around to finding out who it was and where they were. But you hear a lot of stories about cars in Kegley, and I don't disbelieve it, but until you see it yourself, it's it's hard to grasp there's cars like that sitting around. It's it's funny speaking like this era, right? The the 90s, early 2000s, early 2000s, is that when it comes to Commodores, when it comes to HSVs and all sort of stuff like that, the build numbers were a lot lower. They were, they were capped, right, compared yeah. to the mass-produced, um, you know, like VX onward sort of thing like that, mass-produced. And then how many custom cars there were, you know, like you had like the Holden by Design sort of stuff, like you go and buy a VS, it's SS, and then you get the Holden by Design stuff, you know, where mm. it was a sunroof and there was this, there was that. There's a lot more customised stuff, same as HSV. HSV enhanced. Uh, yeah, enhanced, HSVI. Yeah. HSVI, yeah. Yeah. Whereas, whereas that sort of fizzled out, you know, whereas... As in with the, when it comes to later model cars, they were, like I said, mass-produced and they are all very similar, you know, compared to, the, compared to the old girls, you know? Yeah. yeah, the options list got smaller, yeah. but the sales went up because that's yeah. what people wanted. Correct. But then, like, you look at you look at, like, the SV88, right? That was one of the first ever HSVs as such. And that was actually designed for a businessman sort of thing. Mm. It was a Calais, VL Calais. You could get the mobile phone, which is the old brick that used to be bolted into the, into the, into the car itself. And they even had a fax machine, you know? Like, it's so funny how... You know, back in the day, like HSV was actually a luxury car. Yeah, very you know, corporate. Very corporate, you know, whereas now you think corporate, you think, you know, BMW, you think Mercedes Benz and stuff like that. Whereas the old Bogan, at, at the end of the day, mate, they'll, I don't care, they're <laughs> Bogan Commodores, mate, you know, just tricked up Bogan Commodores, you know, that we all loved. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Yeah. Going back to the uh, the online auction thing, you've obviously sort of done done your time trawling through those, uh, buying, selling, and whatnot. Yeah. That's that's sort of how we come across the car that you're arms deep in now, Psycho. Do you want to <laughs> yeah. give us the um, the story of, of how you came across the car or how you found it and um, and and where it's at up to now? Okay, so I found it online. Burns and Co. auction mm. a couple of years ago, right? Um, there was all the photos and stuff online, and I did email Burns and Co. to ask about. Um, they, there wasn't a photo of the tray, okay? And I'm not sure if you guys are aware, the tray was a big centerpiece of the of the, um, of the Ute because yeah. it had V10, V10 amps, and all that sort of stuff like that, and a heap of airbrushing, and, and it had actually like a, a roller shutter, and the roller shutter wasn't operatable. We know it wasn't operational. It was, there, it it was in there. It, look, it was there for looks, but there was, it didn't work. So I actually emailed Burns and Cohen and asked them about, um, about the car. Pretty much said, in essence, is that um, um, there's nothing in the tray. Um, that's all been removed. The TV, there was a TV from the back of the, um, in the back window had been removed. What they told me regarding this, the interior of the car, it looked like everything was there. Mm. but it wasn't yeah okay so um so and you'd been tracking this car for a long time so you knew a lot of the sort of intimate details of, of we what discussed it before it even came up for auction i think it was just just being that era car we 
you know, spoken about it and I knew that Troy loved it and anything that sort of popped up, we'd spoken about mm. it. But it was just by chance that it came up in the auction. Yeah. And we're like, check this out. Because it had been... It, like like Daryl's telling us is that Daryl's done a lot, lot of research and stuff and he actually spoke to the original owner, Jamie, right? So long story short is that Jamie sold the car because Jamie lives in Cowra in, in New, uh, Sa- Nowra. Nowra in New yeah. South Wales. He sold it to a guy that owned a caravan. We traded it for a new caravan. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine that. Yeah. He'd kind of grown up and had the kids and the ute was just sort of sitting there, from what I can work out, about six or seven years after he'd shown it last. Wow. Um, and obviously the kids getting older and they decided they needed to travel whatever reason and yeah. um, he traded on a caravan. Um, I'm not sure, obviously a decent sized caravan because it was, I'm guessing it was probably 80 or 90 grand's worth of caravan for the, the guy that traded it, I think was the one that was first trying to sell it for... 80 or 90, so I guess he's probably trying to get his money back. Mm, um, yeah, so I'm not sure on exact numbers, but that was the gist of it, was that he was the first one to sell it, which I think would have only been a couple of years after he'd probably got it and realised that, <laughs> what am I going to do with this thing? <laughs> That's a real, like, growing up moment, though, isn't it? You have one of the top elite sort of show cars, something that wet, it was on yep. covers of magazines yeah. everywhere, to then trade it in on a caravan. Mm. <laughs> I'm pretty sure yeah. that's the story, anyway. I, I think. And, uh, and the guy had, like, a collection, because there was photos online of the guy's collection. There was other cars and stuff like that. That was, like, a centrepiece. And then we don't know, after that guy sold it, we don't know how many hands it actually went through until, until I got it. So... It's for sale online for a couple of different people. Yeah. But we don't know at what stage exactly who had it and what they did with it. I'm um, sure it's like anything. You get people that sort of go, oh, I could bring that back. You know yeah. what I mean? And, and they think, oh, it's mostly there. We could we could put this back together. Well, and then when you actually get into it, it's like, okay, this is a hell of a lot more than I thought. Yeah. yeah. Well, at that stage, I think when the, when he traded it for the caravan, it was still complete. All yeah. the train, everything, all the cab, everything was still in there. So it still looked like a complete show car ready to go. Yeah. Um, but at some stage between then and when we got it, someone's left it out in the weather and the roller shutter has either not worked or for whatever reason, it's filled the tray up with water. Uh, because of the way that the sub box was done underneath the floor next to the fuel tank, it's fiberglassed in. So the water's then sat in that tub and then the hole that goes into the cab is open. Yeah. Mm. So all the water has be able to pull in the tray and, and then fill to start filling up the cab. Oh wow! Yeah, all the modules, all the wiring, everything for the TV, and that was obviously all behind the seat. So, at some stage, someone's gone. Oh crap! This is all now not working. So they've just started cutting all the wiring and pulling all the stuff yeah. out that you wouldn't see anyway. Okay. Um, so when you open the door and looked in it, basically at the auction period, yeah, it still looked complete. Yeah, but nothing worked. The TV wasn't going to work. Nothing was going to do anything. Um, all the trays obviously got wet. They just pulled the whole lot out, binned it, or they've sold off the parts that were useful. I, we don't really know. We don't know who did that, and we don't have a contact to be able to chase that up. A um, couple of people we've sort of spoken to really bit sort of hazy about it, so yeah. we may never know. Um, someone might come forward and say, you know, oh, my mate had it, and you know, yeah. so if anyone knows anything, it would be good yeah. to, to have a yeah, chat. Shout out, exactly. for sure. Yeah. I mean, for all we know, the, inst- the, the tray install could be sitting in someone's shed still complete. Who knows? Yeah. But, you know, we we can only guess um, but you can see obvious signs of water damage inside the cab and if there was wiring stuff there it's, it's no brainer that it was going to be damaged um, the drains out of the tray one side is completely blocked up so any water that got in there it was it was done for mm. um, so yeah once we yeah, realised that there was no tray in it then <laughs> so, so that, I, you realised that when you were talking to Grays before you no, took so it was Burns and Co over oh, in sorry, Vic- yeah. Burns and Co over in Victoria um I actually never bought it through Burns & Co. I, I spoke with them, as in via email, to find out information about the car. Once I found out it didn't have, you know, X, Y, and Z, is that I didn't bid on it. Hmm. So The it was, blower had also been removed at that stage. So at that stage, when, when I was in Burns & Co, no, it wasn't. It was all, it was all fitted. It was all running, I, I believe, right? Hmm. And then it was mo- a few months later is that I received a link to a Gumtree ad Okay, and that's and then I'll be honest with you is that the gentleman I mentioned earlier, um, one of my mates that does FIFO, he was the one that organised, spoke um, with the guy we bought it off of, or I bought it off of, and he was the one um, did the deal and got it all sorted, got it here to Perth for me. Um, so, like I said, is that when we got it to Perth, um, I pretty much 
took the car, got taken straight off the off the truck, and stay around to Pro Auto in Canningvale. Yeah, the other guys had actually got it running, got all the car running correctly. Um, did a couple of dyno runs, mate. Made amazing power. Not. <laughs> <laughs> Five <laughs> liters always, mate. Yeah. Keeps oh, power. Yeah, right. Absolutely. So, so we <laughs> sounded good doing it. Yeah. So we we got it all running. Okay. So it all ran. It didn't need hardly anything done mechanically because the car had done so many had done low cases. Like I said, it's done four thousand forty two hundred or something. Yeah, like something that. like mm. some stupid. So it didn't need much like that. There was no oil leaks or nothing like that. So we got it running. Then I'll be honest with you. I took the car. I drove the car from Canningvale. And I drove it to my warehouse, and I might have drove around the block once or twice. Yeah, just to drive that car from that from that location to my location was like you know like 10, 15 minutes. But due to the fact that car is super low, that car I don't know the exhaust system was just straight through. It stops at the center console. There's nothing yeah. on it. Oh, so, yeah. <laughs> oh, so it's rusted out where the bits that are left. Yeah, there, there was no sound, any, no nothing. So in the in the car, it sits about an inch off the ground. It was just insanely loud. You could feel the heat coming through the firewall yeah. and underneath the car when you're driving it. Yeah. Your spine would have got crushed. Oh. On, everyone knows VSU. It's as soon as you lower oh. them, they like are terrible, right. terrible for ride quality. Yeah. Like real bad. And I'm not picky at all. No, no, no. <laughs> and then, like I said, I drove it back there and I thought to myself, what have I done? Yeah. As in, what have I done? And then... Um, and nothing worked. Nothing worked. <laughs> yeah. Nothing actually worked. And um, my cousin... He's an auto spark. He had a look at the wiring and stuff like that, and he's like, Troy, this thing needs to be fully stripped. This thing needs like some serious time and effort. And I'm like, wow. So then it sat there in my warehouse for about 12 months. Okay. And then um, in that 12 months time, Daryl and I just, you know, talked about it and then sort of said to Daryl, no, I actually didn't say it. He actually offered, didn't you, Daryl? <laughs> <laughs> now the truth comes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Send it over. Yeah, yeah. Yep. So he goes, mate, I'm not doing anything. Like, I don't work, you know, yeah. I don't do anything, you know. Just sort of finished thing. another big project. Yeah, and so, shared. so we got it, we, we sent it back. We sent it to um, Orange in New South Wales and then the mad magician that I call him, um, yeah, he's been put to the task of putting it back to original um, with a twist of, you know, current current day sort of spec on it, you know. Yeah. So what it to an is elite-ish level. Yeah. what is the base? It's a VSU, obviously. Was it a Malu or an SS? It's an or? Olympic. It's, it's an Olympic it's a Series Three factory manual, five-liter Olympic Ute. So okay. it was absolute pov pack as far as the features go, um, to the point where it didn't even have ABS in it. So when I first saw the photos of it the, online and whatever, and I said, I think the ABS has been removed. I said it's a Series Three, so it's a VT motor with the with the MAF, should have ABS and dual airbag. Like, if we want to try and get this thing registered and someone's removed an airbag and ABS, it's going to be a big problem. Yeah. Um, but then I don't know if I spoke to Troy. I, when, I, when, when I got it into my shed, I um, hunted down for, um, not Troy, um, Jamie, and got a contact number for him and said, you know, I've got this you here. Do you mind if I give you a ring? And he loved it. And I've been on the phone for 20 odd minutes with him to the first time and, you know, confirmed with him that it never had dual airbags never had ABS so I was like well if we want to get it registered that'll make it a lot easier yeah but yeah he started with a dead stock brand new Olympic edition new so there you go and that's when he took it off to get the HDT um, body kit on it that was the first thing he did was the Devonish seats and um, retrim those and then did all the blue bits in the engine bay and then it snowballed quite rapidly from there <laughs> yeah that's right so he got hold of Wayne and did the airbrushing on the tailgate and that was the first bit that he did um, this was pre auto salon days I don't know how he came about the airbrushing thing but got the tailgate done um, and then from there he, he must have started going to auto salons um, and then yeah the airbrushing just snowballed from there and till the whole car was covered till the whole car was covered <laughs> and, and underneath too yeah yeah, yeah. So that... between him and his old man and his best mate they basically did everything themselves they stripped it down and did all the tray and did all the cab and there was as far as i know nothing was really except getting the blower fitted i, I think they did everything themselves yeah okay because getting back to the hdt stuff so it's actually stamped as a hdt ute now oh. and i actually got uh, it's funny what you get and what you don't get right so yeah. i actually got the i got the handbook from hdt with actually with all the options that it jamie actually it was had. built as a sport uh, yeah, so it had the HCT sport sticker sport, on. So whatever yeah. your option package was, it was turned into a sport. But yeah. it even had the receipt. It had the receipts on how much it actually cost Jamie to build to build this HDT Ute, the whole the whole lot. It was, in, it was insane. As in what he actually got done on the car. Like I don't 
seeing what he spent on it and what to purchase the ute, just those two alone, you know. For the time period as well. well the time period was... Yeah. Spent as much on the ute as what he um, paid for the ute, I think. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. some he did the wheels and suspension. It's got coil overs in the front. It's got the custom discs and... Like you know, the seats back then, the Bonnie seats wouldn't have been overly expensive. No, they, they weren't. I was buying wouldn't them. Wouldn't have been cheap either. Yeah, so, true, true. Um, and they were retrimmed from brand new. Because I reckon, from memory, there are seats, and I don't don't quote me on this one, is that it was about twenty five grand that he spent for HDT. Yeah, okay. right. And the Ute was probably worth twenty five grand. You know, so yeah, it's yeah. probably like fifty. And it was still dead stand engine. Didn't it, have a camera. It's crazy it's that you've got on it. you've got the receipts for mm. that, but you Everything, had like yeah. no train install. And, like, <laughs> and, like, no, like you know what I mean? Yeah. Like that, that's it. That, yeah, that stayed with the car, but all yeah, the yeah, stuff, you know what I mean. You yeah. think that's the first stuff that you yeah. kind of lose is bits of paperwork and books and stuff. I even got a HDT hat. I've even got a HDT like key ring and stuff with wow. it when I got it from and I don't know if if the guy that I we purchased I purchased this off of actually is it, if it's re-manufactured sort of thing but it looks pretty legit to me it's like in a whole HDT well, the receipts definitely are but the HDT yeah, the rest of folder and it's all HDT yeah. and gold and stuff you wouldn't so. think anyone's going to put that sort of effort to re no. yeah. to, you, you wouldn't think so anyway and then when the car when I purchased the car it rocked up in a set of HDT Momo like stars Momo stars mate which they're a nice rim but would have been, I would have loved the, you know, the original set of rims that were on it, you know, um, that XHP, what were the, what were the, the original ones? And, um, no, no, not Simmons, but AME. the AME ones. Oh, the, was it Model Arts? Yeah, or whatever? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so funny, that era. There was it just went some things. Had, he, he had some Enki rims that were show rims that were very, very expensive. I don't, first I don't think they were the best looking ones he'd ever had on it, but they were Strong, his show Strong, lightweight, rims. yeah. <laughs> um, yes, yeah, so I had the AMEs and then the... Um, I don't know if it did ever have the Momos on it. Nah, so the Mo I, I think the Simmons, the Simmons, yeah, yeah buds, yeah, so yeah buds at one stage, and that's what we, what you put on it before it got sent over to me with so some yeah buds. Yeah, so pretty much I took the the HDT rims off, and yeah, yeah I had a set of, set of Simmons laying around, so I put them on. They actually come off off a, off a v, that VR center. I bought them for that, you know, <laughs> chuck them on there, and then when I flog that off, I chuck the rims on that sort of thing. So in the last couple of weeks, we do now have a set of brand new Momo Status. 20 by eights. They were the, mate, I they remember were when forged I, rims and they <sighs> popped up for sale, I don't know, a few, few weeks ago now and I sent a link to Troy and they were a one-off set available um, with the perfect uh, offset. Wow. And everything. So you had no choice, Troy. You had to, it was more or less... Was, they were the wheels he always wanted. wanted yeah, that is of, just a sign from someone, isn't it? That's yeah. crazy. Yeah. It's crazy so how it comes sent, together sent like that. I sent a link to Troy and we, so he said, get on it. So I messaged the guys actually rang them and said, you know, these are obviously going to suit VS and yada yada. And, um, they're billet caps as well. They're not the plastic ones. Mm. Like, they're legit. Because they were the ones rims. that were on that um, on that yellow and red. Yeah, um, on the Roman Auto that, Tech. Yeah, yeah, the, the yeah. blown well, that was obviously that was the, the Momo Ute. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. As well. Back then, I think yeah. they were 20s on that Ute back in the day. And I, they must have been rare because you're very... Oh, 20s was... 20s yeah. Up anywhere. But how expensive were 20s back then? Yeah, oh, and yeah. tyres. Yeah. Even like a little bit after that era because I reckon I sort of just missed the psycho... So I started my apprenticeship in like 04, so I got into cars right around then. Yeah, and I, that and I've got, I honestly, I've probably got just about every street Commodore mag from about 04, 05 up till only a few years ago. I've got hundreds of them so and I've kept them all because yeah, yeah. I, I reckon one day when I'm old and retired, I'll just want to just reminisce and have a look. One my wife is cursing me, dude. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but, um, but I don't think I have that ute anyway, so I don't know the exact details yeah. of it, but it's cool. So well, that's the thing. With, with I've been in the car scene since... 95, 96 ish. So before that ute was even built, really. Yeah. Um, but literally. And then obviously seeing through, being in WA, only ever seeing those sort of cars was through magazines. Yeah. Um, forums sort of started kicking off maybe 2000s, I think, really heavily. Yeah. Um, and then digital cameras. So you never really got to mm. see the photos of cars like you do now. Like it could be on the other side of the country and you can see a photo seconds after it's unveiled. Yeah. Back then, we never got to see them until the magazines hit the shelf or the summonats videos or whatever. We were always wait a while. Yeah, yeah. Because even if one of your mates was there and saw it, by the time he takes his camera to the chemist and gets yeah. the photo <laughs> developed and then he sends it to you, you know. So yeah, the knowing Psycho so well, seeing it evolve through magazines very, very rapidly, and being obviously a VS addict. Um, knowing exactly what he was doing and sort of knowing the ute so well but i never actually got to see it in person 
no matter how many shows I went to, most of them running in WA, so obviously it didn't come over for WA, it was the only state that he didn't take it to. Um, but knowing it so well and never seeing it in person, and then the first time I literally laid eyes on that ute, it was coming out of a transporter in my backyard into my shed. Surreal. Oh. And I knew everything about it. Yeah. But yet, I'd never seen my seen him in person. I'd never even met Troy, funnily enough. I'd spoken to him online, and that was it. I'd never, never met him. Um, so all of a sudden, I've got this ute that I hadn't seen. Well, you know, you don't see it in magazines, but never seen it. No one had seen it for 20-odd years. And then all of a sudden, it's in front of me in my shed, and, and I'm just standing with my kangaroo staring at it, like, what the hell is this? How, how did this come about? Yeah. <laughs> so I'd, I'd never seen it either. I'd never seen the UD either. It's, it's like, I'm it the same never been to WA. It, yeah, I'm the same no as Daryl. It was only the street, Commodore Mag, and every other Mag, right? Yeah. And realistically, if COVID didn't hit right, I wouldn't have been having that cool drink on my patio, and a mate's like, here's, here's a link to it. Like, you got a second chance. Is this somebody yeah. trying to tell you something? Hanging right? you on. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and the same bloke that's, you know, he pretty much, like, you know, so, so yeah, and, and that's the story that it is, you know? Like, yeah, right. But it's, you've always got a mate egging you on, and like, yeah, as well, in, we're their mates. Oh, we're we're their mates. I'm pretty bad for it. <laughs> or, yeah. You know, oh mate, you think you should have this, or what do you think well, of that? I told him to buy it, but I never expected it to end up in my shed. <laughs> but yeah. it was just one of those cars, like an idle piece, right? Well, it's a it's a piece of history, isn't it? Yeah. Like there's just something there's something there. Yeah. Oh, for me it is. A lot of other people might look at it and think this thing's a piece of shit. Yeah. Why, Troy? Why are you spending money on that? Like there's other things you be, you know, whatever. I'm like, man, I yeah. work. For this, yeah, that's you know? it. Yeah, the only thing is when we when he first got it, and we were obviously it sat there for twelve months, and we were sort of back and forth about. Um, I'd already committed to doing it, but I hadn't had it yet. I think it was a few months after I'd said send it over. Actually, it was more than six months, I think, when I said, "Yep, yeah, I'll do it." You know, send it over. So we're sort of back and forth about what to do with the tray because obviously there was nothing; it was complete blank canvas. So Troy's um, obviously knew what I'd done in the past and said, "You know, what can we do with it?" and I'm like, I don't know. I said, I'll just go to town. I said, we'll get some stuff. We'll just build something that you know, mm. works. Um, we can either stick to with what it was, which was reasonably boring to us. Extend it was just a couple of flat panels, a couple of amps. Like it was nothing at the top. It was the airbrushing that made it look showy. Yeah. So I said, we can do whatever you want. Go nuts. Find something you want to do. And I'll just basically copy that, change it up, make it what we can do. And it was then that the auto selling cars started popping back up. Mm. It was just in that the, period. The sex spec cars just started oh, to rise from the ashes. And they started popping up at shows and everyone was going nuts over it. Like, yeah. oh, it's cool to see this car. I remember this car, you know, how original it was. And then photos start turning up of it. And, you know, oh, I've got photos of that back, you know, 10 years ago. And no one had photos of Psycho. It had been put in a shed 03-ish. And nobody had phones with cameras in. Yeah. So yep. you go look online. <laughs> I was trying to find photos of the tray so I could copy it. You can't find photos of it. It just doesn't exist. But yet, everybody knows that car so well. Oh, I've got the magazine. I've got the poster on my shed. Yeah. Everyone's yeah. got it. Yeah, they've got a front three quarter shot. The photo they've got in their head is that exact photo that's on the poster. No one yeah. knows any other angles of it. Nobody's seen it. You can't find photos of it. It's like, this is going to make it really hard to build. <laughs> so it was really cool to when we first announced that, obviously, we were rebuilding it. And then everyone was like, oh, you know, I remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah cool. And I'm like, you got any photos of it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I've got some photos somewhere in my box. And I was like, that doesn't help me. Yeah. So I've had a few people scan them and send photos through, but they're, you know, they're old and grainy. It's, they're just not high res photos to, yeah. be able to use to get details. So I'm literally using Summonats, sorry, not Summonats, Street Machines photos. And I've got a, a ruler out. I'm trying to measure the pieces that are in the tray so that we can build it to be roughly the same size, but change it over. So when the auto selling cars started popping back up and we said maybe we should keep it the way it was because that's how people remember it that's how it should mm. be we're not trying to reinvent the wheel no. you know, we, I'll remake it the same um, we'll adapt a few things to make it uh, different I won't say better um, but we incorporated the airbags into it all that's completely hidden mainly because you can take it to a show you can lay it out look sick everyone loves that but the key for us is we're obviously going to trail it everywhere is we can lift it to get it into the transporter without having to take the front bar off or yeah. you know if it's still low you can drive it I was going to say you can drive height. it without crushing yeah. your spine if you want it to look low <laughs> you can yeah well there's no guarantee it's not going to do that still that weight in it that yeah front true, bar's true massive man isn't it? yeah so yeah. it's got a race car front bar on it's it which is it. it was obviously a HDT one back in the day and it's a solid bar it's built well it's still in mint condition so um, but you know we can put the bags in it take it to a show and lay it out and I've had the 20s on the front and put one corner in already. Um, and basically, once it's fully aired out at the moment, the front bar will sit about 15 or 20 mil off the ground. Perfect. So, bang on. Yeah, it's, it's not going to... Yeah. 
it'll be sketchy and Troy's got to be careful with it. But <laughs> it'll um, it'll be low. But yeah, it had coilovers in it, so I've removed that, did some measurements, and it's about 80 mil lower with the airbags to what the coilovers were. Wow, so that's insane. It'll tuck the 20s in the front guard and it'll look mad at a yep. show. Um, but, you know, we don't want to change and have the airbag on display in the trailer. Like, look at us, we've, we've changed it. We mm. want to try and keep it original. So everything that's been done is been done the same um, of a better quality to a point, to a showy yep. point. Um, everything that was done very, very quickly that Jamie did had to be done quickly because between auto salons had to knock it over quick to make it to get to the next show to look like there was progression that was the way that the auto salons worked yeah so now we're building stuff to be judged from a you can get in there and judge it not from a distance so um that's where a lot more time is involved in making things meticulous which i won't say ocd but it's you know i'm it's just ingrained in me now with my job that it has to be to the to the best level i can do it so it's a lot more time to make things like that, but the difference will be people can get in there or judges can get in and have a look and it will be flawless. To a point. I, think, I think it's pretty obvious that that's like sort of an attribute that you have just in general is you've got a good eye for, for detail. detail. Yeah. And, and also I think the scene in Australia as it's evolved over time, like that's sort of where we've like narrowed down to now where it's like everyone's doing the really nice smooth engine bays and it's yeah. it's the little details that we all know make a car what it is, you know. The cream so, will always rise to the top, you know, yeah. and it's just like, well, I mean, we were just walking around the SLE before we started recording yeah. and it's, it's people like yourself who have been around these things so often you can pick those minute details that not many other people would see you know what i mean like there's there's little things that are done on Mm. like your car as well kurt unless you're you're intimately familiar with that make and model you probably wouldn't be able to pick it but you've got that eye you know what i mean yeah Yeah, it's just it's like an evolution through the decades you obviously as all blokes we've all got egos you want to try and do something a little bit better that either you've done before or someone else has done and that's just the evolution of the car scene Mm. i think you like you said you know they'll slap them together and doing big chunks and then eventually you can only do that for so long before you want to do it like the, the little details, yeah. yeah, the one percent. Like that, like we're getting it down to a, into a needle point now yeah. with, with the show car side yeah. of things. Like Australians build amazing yeah, quality cars mm. on a world scale. Yeah. I think even our, a lot of our street car stuff, you know, it's it's really good compared to overseas. I think. So the decision to sort of restore it back to how it was in the glory days, Troy, is that something that you were pretty pumped on, or were you maybe looking forward to make, <clears throat> sorry, making some changes or some improvements? No, so. Re- Realistically, I wanted to rebuild it to what I remember the car. Yeah. As well. What that you know. The real nostalgia. The real, hit. yeah. That, as in the poster. You yeah. know what I mean? The poster and reading about it, mate. That's what I wanted to do. You want to look at the poster and have look at the poster and look at the U. Yeah. And they're the same. Identical. And they're yeah. different. You know, sort of. What's the point of restoring it when it's? There, and but there is a few little touches. Like mm. like I said, is that you laugh. It's actually so when it comes to the stereo system in it, is that it's actually. The old school stereo gear. I was just about to ask, yeah, so in, in regards to equipment, have you found that same equipment yes, that it had? Yeah. So, and the that screen w- was in there, the screen was fine, but it didn't have the, the module which is hidden away, which is the key for units back yeah, then. Yeah. So I managed to source one of them. So yeah, so we've had to, we've had to hunt high and low to get, to get the, orig- like the, the hardware to run, the, to run the, um, the stereo. The speakers aren't the original speakers, no. okay? But they and they're not the original brand of speaker either, okay? So we've actually we've changed that, but you wouldn't know. It's, yeah, okay. stuff yep. that you can't see. We've yep. changed. Yeah, and it's funny, um, like you've got the big V10 amps in the back; they're massive. And Daryl had um, pulled in a favour and actually got some um, bought from Nathan. From Nathan oh know, yeah, <laughs> bought some like reconditioned ones. Yeah, and mate, these things look brand new. Excellent. Okay? But then. When it comes to the speak, when it comes to the amps that run the speakers and the doors and also the subs and stuff, right? You don't realise how far technology has come. Like how big the, su- the the amps are only like minute, really, really small, and they actually pump, they actually pump out more power than those big bricks that are in the back of the train, yeah. you know, yeah. those sort of stuff. So, getting back to it is that the car will look the same as what it was in the in the magazines. The only things change, like Daryl said, is that. The airbags is more for practicality. Yeah. The Momo status was my dream. Okay. Is that if I if we can find those the rims that the were because we have yeah. been looking yeah. the AME model arts yeah. or the, the Momos. I mean, you Momos just don't exist. Yeah, correct. Yeah. So people if, who've got them don't want to sell them. 
So if we can find the other set, other set of rims, yes, I will purchase them. So it's so it is the same. Okay. Um, when it comes to the modifications, is that the additional modification will do to the car? A lot of it is what the original owner wanted to do to it, but never did to it. Ah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So potentially the car might end up with a with some twin throttle bodies. Ooh, on now, the, we're on the <laughs> now we're talking. Now we're talking to do. Yeah, which he wanted to do. He had um, lined up. Also, is that the engine bay will be getting refurbished, as in like smoothed out? I was, I was about to ask that so question as well. Daryl's already um, hidden all the wiring, etc., out of the engine bay. Mm -hmm. um, that's all being done. So that's just all. All realistically, all that's going to do is getting clean, re-cleaned up, stuff yeah. like. That. We will be. The, the supercharger will stay. Yeah. The is it the same supercharger that it had before? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Same supercharger thing. and intercooler as as before. One thing that is that will be getting changed is the way that the piping for the supercharger we run, the piping on the supercharger, yeah, the piping on the supercharger is massive. Yeah, like it's a three-inch thing, and we don't know why it's been done like that. It's more for, probably for show. Purposes. I was going to say that'd yeah, be yeah. just bang for like yeah. wow, like yeah. Also, so that will be all. That will be changed. Okay, um, you guys would have seen um, on Daryl's YouTube channel regarding what he's done with the flooring. Yeah. The flooring is only was is, is got changed due to the fact for, for weight purposes because it was made out of pretty much sheet <laughs> <mil> metal. <laughs> oh really? Yeah, I could thick, barely pick up the, the old ones were ten kilo each. Yeah. The new ones under three. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Not that the weight's really a concern, but it was no. just yeah. they were built um, the original carpet was still in there underneath. Yeah. And they'd sat over the top of that and you couldn't push the clutch pedal in that uh, the clutch <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> Jeez, they did some crazy stuff. Hey? I would never taken, think of doing that. Yeah. Hey? You know what? I'm going to put steel over my carpet. <laughs> yeah. 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 Look, if someone's out. taken to the floor with an angle grinder <clears throat> to try and get the clutch to fit properly, so they've cut it up and hacked it up anyway. So it's like, yeah. Yeah, well, that one's going in the bin. Yeah. But once I had, I had to pull all that out to do the sound dead now, and once I'd done all that, the floors probably wouldn't have fit it anyway. So yeah. it was just a logical thing to that, do. That 100% makes finishing. sense. Yeah. So they'll get airbrushed to be exactly the same again. Yeah. Um, that's the plan anyway the, the original person who did all the airbrushing he's from Perth now okay. um, he goes between Sydney and Perth and we've spoken to him so hopefully he can work out a time frame where he can be he's going to come out orange um, so I'll have everything ready to go and he'll just re-airbrush everything and copy and paste from the old ones to the new ones so visually they look exactly the same which yeah. is the whole point behind it yeah but when it gets judged there's no gaps the finish is oh, a lot better it's the next so, level of finish does yeah. he have like photos of all the work that he done on that you like to, to pull from for when he redoes it? Or? Um, it was actually done twice. I don't know if you know, but it was the whole thing except the tailgate was completely re brushed Okay. In 2010. So Jamie got all the stuff done. Um, and if you look at photos, there is two sets of airbrushing photos, so to speak. Right. So Jamie got it all done. Um, and then it sat there for six, seven years. 2010, from what I can work out, is that Wayne who does the airbrushing contacted him and said look I'm doing a calendar or a TV show series can I take it and redo it and we want to use it and he said that's fine do whatever you want to do don't change the one on the tailgate because that's the original one and I don't want that touched so everything else on the sides all the floors all the doors everything got redone so I don't think that the only thing that not everything was the bonnet yeah the well, bonnet was the yeah. same and the, I must admit the bonnet is the only bit that I don't <laughs> like about the car <laughs> the, the photo of the bonnet I don't like but I also, the new murals on the side of the car, mate, I reckon they're even better than the original ones. You know, yeah, That right. sort of stuff, you know? Yeah. So it's kind of that, the thing where now we've got, it's, you know, it sort of has to stay how it is, but then is it original or isn't it original? It's, I think as long as you keep it in the spirit of what yeah, it was yeah, back exactly. then. You never, yeah. Like you said, no one's even got photos. Everyone's no. got memories. I bet people that seen it originally, if they seen it again, they probably wouldn't even yeah. know. You know, As long as you keep it in the spirit, I think a little bit of your own flavour... Yeah. Well, that's the thing. Like, we're it, is per, it. It's like a good mix, yeah. you know? You're not so really... when I first spoke to Jamie and I said, look, this is what's missing. Like, he was pretty devastated, but at the same time, just hearing that I had it and still alive. He didn't know me from Bar of Soap. He didn't mm -hmm. know my history whatsoever. But obviously talking to me for the for the period and then saying what we're going to do and what I've got to do. And like all the stuff behind the seat, that was completely gone. So the eyeball subs, long gone. We don't yeah. know where they are. Mm. Um, so it, it was it, it was kind of a phone call to get his approval to a point to <laughs> say, you know, this is what we want to do. Do you think that would work? And he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then um, I sent him the photo of the, the wheels when we got 
and he's just like, <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, that's Yeah, they're going to look so, so good, eh? Um, and one of the main things that I did on the interior was always, it was sort of, I'd say, 80% done as far as custom goes. So it still had the original roof lining. The plastics on the B pillars, I don't think he ever painted, but they were obviously changed back. All the back on the seat was changed back to an original setup because it had been removed. So someone's gone to the trouble of doing that and repainting the whole tray in black again so it all looked like it was an original. Um, so when I sent him the photos of stuff I was doing, I got, and Troy didn't even know at the time, I got another roof lining from the wreckers. I was like, I'm not putting a standard roof lining back in this thing. <laughs> so I got another roof lining and fiberglassed it all and had it all smoothed out in primer and everything. And I sent a photo to Jamie and he's like, is that a glass roof? And I said, yes, it is. And he goes, oh man, he goes, I always wanted to do that. He goes, <laughs> yeah. That's sick. So yeah. it's, um, we've got his blessing for everything that we've sort of done with it. Um, and going back to the twin throt thing, I was talking to him at Summonats and I met him for the first time and he said, I was actually on my way to Wollongong to pick up a set of twin throts and it was two and a half or three grand or something. <laughs> and before he left, for whatever reason, he never ended up getting there to pick it up. And oh, I was like, really? It's like kicking yourself, seriously? Yeah. yeah. You know, they're worth 15 grand or something now to pick up one back then. Two and a half, three grand would have been ridiculous money as well. But oh yeah, it, um, so he had intentions of putting that on it was you know just a natural no-brainer back then that was what you would do to try yeah, and yep. increase its you know that's presence. just what everyone did eh? yeah. it was sort of there was token things from that era mm. and that's kind yeah. of how i like my cars as well like yeah. we joke about the air buds and stuff but back then if you had simmons the original three-piece like that was yeah. what everyone wanted you yeah. know and i still reckon that they're a good looking wheel yeah. there's yeah. no no, they're a go -to yeah, they, they, go -to. they look good when they're done right. You're not just saying it because they're on your car right now. Well, they're, they're on my car because <laughs> of that, and I got them checked. So, yeah, but but yeah, yeah, the twin throts and there's certain things, there's a certain look that we just we all sort of know and yeah, like, and it just works with 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 the old Commodores. Yeah, I think we're all, um, you know, the the four of us, we're all sort of into that that particular era. You know what yep. I mean? Like all four of us. We're from that era of the Offer, forum. And, although one and magazine. Th sorry to cut you off, Chef, but one thing with Daryl, I remember he used to always hang shit on the five liter guys. He'd be like, Bodanko, remember from the forum days? Because oh, you were yeah. a V6, Super six a boy. V6 guy back in the day, <laughs> yeah, whoop, whooping ass. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And we do the same with LS guys and Barrett guys and everything. Funny it's all is, in good fun, the isn't only it? The five liter motor I've ever owned in my life came from a written off VS Club Sport in Kegerly that I bought that got T boned. And we pulled the motor and box out and I. Sold it or tr gave it to a guy who built my Gen 3 for the GDSR. Yeah. <laughs> so I've never actually owned a car with a VS5 litre that's running and driving. Yeah. I've never actually owned a car that's got a V8 in it, funnily enough. So, so what's the go with the GDSR? Is that. I was just about that, to say, yeah, where, where's. Obviously, it's probably waiting until it was, Psycho's finished, but. It was, <laughs> it's an unfortunate um, time in my life, I guess, that I went from being in Kaguli to never doing any panel beating in my life to. Being able to do all the auto electrical, all the paint, um, all the powder coating and stuff, everything I could do myself, I did in Kaguli on that car. And I kind of had the money to do that sort of stuff before I left Kaguli. Um, and then when I moved, decided to move over east, it went into a truck, or went into, I bought a truck to move all my cars over um, this side, sorry, the other, where are we now? Yeah, the other side of the country. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I took everything back to, Keg to back to Orange with me. So the car sat there, and then after the couple of years of starting doing the panel beating, I was like, "Well, you know, I can sort of do this stuff now." So I had the car to be able to the skills to be able to finish the engine bay. It was really the only thing left to do on it. So I sort of started doing a few bits here and there, but it got to the point where I just didn't have the time or the money to be able to do it. It's panel beating, you, you don't make any money. It's, it's it's not an industry you want to do to be able to pay for stuff. <laughs> um, so it's now a situation where it sat that long that I just, I won't say lost interest, but I just don't have the time of day to work on it. Um, I've got a five acre property, I live with Mrs. On, but it's got a six by six garden shed. And mm. It's a low roof, you can't do anything in there. I can't yep. fit, like I've got the ute in now, the GDSR is undercover um, on, the, uh, on a lean-to on the side of the shed. So it's not in the weather, but it's also not completely covered over. Yep. Um, so it's not deteriorating, but it's, also it hasn't been touched yeah um so it's still exactly the same condition as what it was when i left kagoli basically um once i get a shed sorted then i will get back into it yeah um so it's sort of the first one to start building a gdsr replica and i'm like yeah be the last one to finish. yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah i think there's more replicas than genuines now but it is yeah. what it is but it was yeah 
And what's the goal for it? It was going to be a burnout car originally. Is that still was, the plan? All it's con- solely was going to be burnout car. Back when I started building it, there was no such thing as power crews and that sort of stuff to events to take your car to. So it was either burnouts or drag racing. That was pretty much it. So yeah. now it's evolved into event cars where you can take them and go and just cruise around the track and you know do power skids and burnouts and whatever you want to do with it. So um, I don't know that right this second I have a goal for it other than yeah. build a car that I can drive and use I always wanted to twin turbo it with the NRE mirror image turbos um, so the engine bay was what I've started building was built with the intention of doing that having the low mount turbos on the sides and have the biggest bay possible um, so when I get back into it that'll still be the goal um, but yeah I guess just to start with is get it up and running and having a driving car that I can actually go and use Yeah. but then the Calais that was built every nut and bolt on that was stripped back to absolute nothing <laughs> yeah. and built that car and then finished that got a tune and drove that across Australia and that's um, once that ran out of rego in New South Wales it pretty much got parked up and it hasn't been regoed again yeah so okay it's, it's that sort of sitting out the weather that has deteriorated oh really it's, sort of it's in a to, sad state of repair it's, it's not the best. I do I do remember photos of that and this is sort of before the big burnout comp started and whatever but you you were skidding the car and I still vividly remember this photo that was probably taken from the track side of the burnout pad where the exhaust is just glowing like an undercar neon yeah. from the header flange yeah. all the way to the exhaust tip yeah. there's actually a photo from <laughs> from behind with the smoke off to the side cleared obviously from the wind and you can see the one exhaust tip, three inch exhaust, and it is orange yeah. at the back of the car. Like, wow. you look straight and it's orange. I don't know. Probably the most expensive undercar neon you could buy. Yeah. <laughs> it used to melt the rubbers front to back. So I'd get off the pad and the exhaust would be pretty much on the ground because it would just melt the rubbers front to back. And yeah. I don't know whether that was in the tune or if it was just sitting on, you know, limited for the three minutes. <laughs> yeah, it melt. used to copper flogging. But <laughs> how the hell it kept going, I don't know. It used to eventually it seize the blower, but. I don't know. I've never seen any other cars do that. that no, I was going to so say, it performs like it. really good. And I guess back in that era, there weren't many guys skidding V6s like like they are now. You know, like e- e- that's all everyone's sort of skidding now for the most part. Yeah. Back then, you were sort of paving the way a little bit. Yeah. Like, from yeah. what I remember anyway, like yeah. I'm not heavily, I wasn't heavily involved in that scene, but, but I, d- wasn't I definitely remember. V6s running around doing it. That's for yeah, sure. that's right. <laughs> but I, used, I don't know, it was just, that was the car I had and that was what we, we had a thing in Kegley where we go every weekend and do burnouts and it was just the car I had so I was like I'll just start burning out in this one yeah. <laughs> um, and then you know made a little bit more power in it and it's like it goes alright so got a decent built transmission and then yeah, went down for burnout masters in Jesus probably would have been 07 it would have been late 2000s when some my motivation was still a good thing um, went out for burnout masters drove it down there went in the comp against all the, the blowing cars and everything back then and it was just the one class I think yeah. and um I missed out on top 10 by one place. That's crazy. <laughs> and it was all the, the big big name guys back then that sort of, I, I knew most of them. And yeah, Farrell and, and George like, Saparovich. Oh, like, man, you, you should have been in top 10. Like, to go out there with a V6 and do that yeah. and, and miss out by one place. It's yeah. like, I'm like, yeah, I had fun doing it. I didn't care. I wasn't going there to win. But, you yeah. know, top 10 in a V6 against all the blowing cars would have been pretty cool. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, the next day, got in, drove home, back 600 k's back to Kelly and didn't miss a beat. Like, <laughs> how the hell it kept going? I didn't yeah. know. Eventually, it did break um, only because I did a burnout at the Kegley Speedway and I think we waited about five minutes and then went back out to go again and uh, the oil was too hot, too thin yeah, and it yeah. Um, yeah, started knocking I was like, well, that's the end of that game. It was still running but yeah, when we pulled it down it was bearings were not real good um, yep. and it got sent to Perth to get the engine rebuilt and he said, you've been giving this thing a hard life. I said, oh, it's, it's had a reasonable hard couple of years. Why? And he said, oh, your pistons are square. Wow. <laughs> and I was like... Is that, is that normal? He goes, no. <laughs> so, yeah, right. He goes, this thing's been revving a lot for a long time. I'm like, yeah, 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 it's, yeah it's had a couple of revs. <laughs> Send him a link to a YouTube video or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, motivation, a couple of years, uh, three years I ended the burnout comps in that and never really got anywhere, but it was, yeah. Yeah, it was a bit of fun. But and that was just a stock bottom end L67? That was dead standard. It was still a standard cam. It was just rockers and a bit more boost and a tune. Yeah. I think it was about it. And then we put the intercooler on it and that, that really woke it up. But trying to spin the blower um, three times faster than standard, it didn't like it. It got yeah. very hot. And yeah, the rotor pack's little, not too keen. The little blower did not like expansion. Yeah. Nah. They're old, aren't they? Up. They were old sort of even back yeah. then. Yeah. 
for yeah, sure. Their maximum is supposed to spin at twenty one thousand or something, and I think mine was twenty eight or thirty thousand RPM or something like that. So, yeah. when did we did the mass on it, it wasn't supposed to be doing what it was doing. Did Calais come out with a supercharged V sixty? Series two VS. Yeah. The Statesman and Calais were the only ones that came with that. Yeah, okay. That so motor. Only, the, only the Statesman's come out of it. Wasn't, yeah. yeah. It wasn't aware that the you Calais couldn't buy it in anything else. It was only Statesman and Calais. Yeah. yeah. It was only yeah, Series two. Yeah, and the Caprices and stuff. Yeah. 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 Um, My wife then, had a Series three VS Caprice. Yep. With a Super Six, that was a punchy little little car. Honestly, they were quite good. Yeah, dead standard. They were pretty. They were they were detuned because they didn't want them quicker than the five liters. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think they probably still were. Yeah. I think honestly, I think but they like were twenty kilos like, yeah, difference they, on paper. <laughs> they were six pound, um, six and a half pound or something standard boost, and you know they could run 10, 11 all day long, um, which isn't a massive upgrade, but it's enough to make a five liter look pretty silly. Oh yeah. Um, but when you turn them up to a twenty one. Really wakes them up. Yeah, they can make 450 horsepower at the wheels standard on a dead standard motor without anything done to them. You just got to put a bigger blower on it. Yeah, so they're a strong little motor. Yeah, they're and fantastic. You've got to you know can, what you're doing to. Yeah, to especially with advancements of like E85. Now everyone puts E85 on stuff. You yeah. can just get ridiculous power now. It's it's crazy. Yeah. I've yeah. seen your limitation uh, really is your hard parts at this point. Yeah, <laughs> I've seen on. I think it was one of the V6 groups which i don't think i'm on a v6 group but some sort of commodore group i don't <laughs> want to say that know. out loud they've they've just put a someone's just put a 2650 harrop blower on a on a l67 holy hell yeah damn so, dude yeah i was interested <laughs> well, to see how that's that a goes. lot of compressor yeah I think justin's from astro his wagon that's got a 2.9 on it yeah yeah, yeah. Um, i remember that had a, yeah a big whipple on it but that's like that's a big build that that thing holy well, hell he um before the wagon was orange because I've known him for ever since forum days. Like back a long when it time, was silver, was, we we sort of between us we started BYE name effectively backyard engineering. That's yep. where it came from. We were <laughs> taking the piss one day and I see yeah, backyard engineering and it was kind of stuck and now it's now it's a thing. Um, but yeah, he's the wagon motor. I think he was supposed to go somewhere and it broke and he had a dead standard one sitting there. So he put this bulk stock, however many hundreds of kilometres on it in the car with the 2.9 set up and he drove it for a year <laughs> drove all that to Kalgoorlie and back didn't miss a beat and obviously tuning him you know he knows his shit so um, and then he got back to Perth and went and rags and ran 10.8 or something in it and then you know went to the burnout comp at the same night and flogged the hell out of it and drove it back just home. kept like, home how the hell yeah. it survived and that was over 400 horsepower of the wheels from a yeah. dead standard V6 like yeah, funny story. My wife wrote that Caprice off, and he come down to Bunbury and bought it. I, saw, the motor. I ripped everything. There was nothing <laughs> okay. left. He took the shell and had the motor. Like the drive line was in it, but I took all the interior and so everything that motor. I wanted out of it. And he he took literally the car, and yeah, it was probably that motor. It was probably that motor. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because yeah. he literally went and picked one up just so he could keep driving the car and just dropped the standard motor in until he's because he was building stroker motors then. Yeah. And I think that was a bit of a waste of time because he realised that they weren't the strongest and yeah. went through more of those and. And then when he made over 400 and dead standard motors, like we'll just put some head studs and gaskets and standard motor and just keep doing that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So that's the that's the B6 story anyway. Yeah. <laughs> it's like getting back, sorry. It's no, like no, you're getting right. Getting back to Psycho, right? Getting back to like the, the car audio thing, right? Mm. I think one of the biggest highlights is when, when Daryl, when we finally sourced all the car audio and Daryl had it, you know, rigged up and stuff, he was actually sitting in the car with the original Nintendo 64 that was in the car. Yeah, which actually, still works. Which is still works. Awesome. Playing, what was that game? Um, Wave, Wave, Wave Rider, Rider or Wave like Rider. So like, it's okay. the only game that Jamie ever had in yeah. it, and it's still <laughs> with it. It was still in the car <laughs> when I received it. So this is random stuff where you receive three, oh, car, right. three cars, but yeah. It's yeah. so good. Yeah. Now you've done a good job of um, documenting it so far on the Cal SBL YouTube channel, and I'm sure there's plenty more updates to come because you've got a fair few late nights ahead of you. Yeah, well, when I we first got the car over there and um, I'd already had it in my mind that obviously Troy being in WA he wasn't going to get to see the progression on it unless I had videos or you know something of it mm. so mm. I'd, my, I've had my YouTube channel for I think since 2007 and yeah. it was only back then it was purely just to put up the videos from the burnout comps motivation so that the people that were there could see them because yeah. there was no social media back so then. So you could so post the link on the forum. Yeah, so it was, it was <laughs> yeah, because you couldn't load it to the forum because the forums were photos. Actually, I don't think they could even load photos. No, because you had to have a photo bucket. You had to have a <laughs> yeah, photo bucket account and then, you know, YouTube was obviously put videos on so you could put the link up so people could watch their video or whatever. Um, and so I knew I had the, the platform already there with, you know, massive amount of subscribers <laughs> 120 or something yeah. um but yeah it was 
I, I, I had a, a brand new iPhone that I haven't even used and I, was, I knew it was a decent quality kind of thing so I thought I'll just start doing some clips on it and I said to try I'm going to record everything I'm doing so that we've got history of it so we can either start doing YouTube episodes or you know we can make sort of videos out of it whether we want to make it public that no one knew that I even had the U, no one knew it was getting restored um, and once again that was right before the all the auto selling cars started mm. showing up and mm. had the interest so I sort of had six or nine months of footage already been recording the steps as I was going and then it started popping up and Troy said oh maybe we should you know start putting them up now so people can sort of follow it and see it and ride the wave it was, it was, was one of the other ones yeah. either not tell anyone and just turn back up with it yeah. finished yeah. or have a progression and I said to him look I honestly don't know I'm not on it every day so it's going to be YouTube is sort of something mm. you need to be doing on a consistent basis to make it work, really. Yeah. Um, and not n knowing that there wasn't that wasn't going to happen. Mm. I couldn't do enough footage during a week or a couple of weeks to be able to make a decent episode. It was like, do we do it or don't we? But you know, it's worked out all right. I, I reckon ride that wave of interest while people are uh, are interested in it. Yeah. Keep like capture that. Yeah. And you know that. That only makes it last longer or get more stories. And like you say, when, when you start putting things on social media, that's when you get that bloke that goes, hey, I've got photos of this yep. or I've actually got a piece from that build. I've or got that, that train stalls in my backyard or yeah. something yeah. like that. Yeah. Well, that's what it was more like. It was actually like a thank you like to the people because it's unbelievable how many people have reached out to Daryl and said, you know, yeah. I've got this, I've got, not, not parts-wise, but actually photos or I remember this, remember that, you know, like... That's, that's one reason we or did Or just the simple did. things, comments are saying, you know, I'm really glad that yeah. you're doing the rest day. Like, yeah. it's, it's really cool to see because, you know, I remember that Uton, but, you know, it just disappeared. So, yeah. it's... Um, I mean, Kurt will tell you, this, I mean, our, our opinion after having sort of started our, our YouTube journey and putting our bits and pieces up there, not that we do anything spectacular, but you get back far more than you put in I feel like yeah, you know the, the community input the support the motivation and and the, the level of accountability that it holds you to as well yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um you know it's it's a really good thing the funny thing funny story about how we actually end up here really is that I probably never come across your channel previously um it wasn't until I think you mentioned it in one of the videos that oh have you seen that Psycho's getting restored <laughs> And someone sent me the link to that, and I was like, "What do you mean?" And I went and watched it, and I was like, "Oh, that's pretty cool." Yeah. And then, you know, obviously from there, subscribe and started watching the videos and stuff. But it's it's things like that where you, that's how, you know, it's the community it grows. Became, yeah, yeah. It became yeah. Where and you we just are yeah, now. you just make make new friends, new yeah. like minded friends. You yeah. know, we've we've made two new mates today. That's it. You one never one know. of them had to take a bus, two trains, and a plane. And <laughs> <laughs> that's five and a half thousand k's, I think, to get here. But yeah, yeah it's yeah. take me a couple of days. Yeah. And you're probably still only just getting over the jet lag now, and here you oh, are on camera. I still keep waking up at four thirty in the morning, thinking it's <laughs> seven thirty in in Orange. Yeah. Eight o'clock last night, I was ready to go to sleep. <laughs> yeah. So what's the plan once the car's finished, Troy? What are you going to do with it? Is it just going to be a bit of a showpiece? Is it going to be just that uh, that trophy for you, or is it something that you're going to use? No. So realistically, is that it will go on the. Uh, all I want to do is take it to Summer Nats. To yeah. Perth, I want to take it to Summer Nats. And I want to take to Motor X in Melbourne. Yep. Whatever else happens to it, like I'll probably stay on the East Coast for another 12 months after it's finished. Okay. I, I can't afford a penthouse, right? And I, <laughs> and I, and I can't afford a, a Ferrari to put in the penthouse like a certain person we've seen, which is credit to him, right? So he was a McLaren. Yeah, McLaren. Okay. <laughs> right, no, no, no worries. <laughs> so realistically is that in the future, when I retire, is that I'll hopefully I'll, I'll build a um, house with a, with a garage and all I want, I've, I've seen a photo once where all it was was a, a guy had a couple of cars in a garage mm. and there was like a glass screen. Yeah, um, we've all seen that And photo. you can look from your lounge room there, right? So pretty much all I want is that, is my, is the Psycho Ute and my VS GDSR, right? So when I'm sitting <laughs> down, when the kids are probably annoying me or yelling at me, whatever, I can just, I can just tune out and I can look at the cars and think, how cool are they? Yeah. Right? yeah. That's, that's all I want to do. They're awesome. just trophies on a mantelpiece, but it's a bloody big mantelpiece. Hey, that's, that's, man, we could only dream of so many things. You know, I think, yeah, like you say, I've seen the similar photos. It's a pure yeah. white lounge room with a projector screen, <laughs> and then you've got like this big window, and you can yeah. just look out over your cars. I reckon there wouldn't be anything better. Oh, yeah. that's, that, you know, that's it. The only thing I don't want is I, there's a big craze when it comes to the lights on the roof, and they're like them. Oh, the hexagrid. Hexagrid. <laughs> 
they're everywhere. It's like yeah. it's like VS Genius Art replicas, mate. You yeah. know, they're everywhere. <laughs> I, like, I don't want them. <laughs> <laughs> nah, so we'll, we'll get it finished. The, the the gist of the the from here on in is basically the engine bay will be smoothed. Um, we'll just fill up the holes. It's not going to be over the top. We we don't want to. Um, all the original stainless steel plates that hid all the wiring and all the stuff in the engine bay that made it look showy but not tidy uh, they weren't they didn't come with the unit anyway mm. so i'm not going to remake stainless pieces to hide stuff that no. i can hide no yeah. way so yeah the first thing to that i did was get rid of all the wiring at the engine bay so it's all done that had the ute back up and running again um found a lot of things that were done related to the blower kit that were uh, not the best and probably didn't help it running mm. um there's things that deteriorated with age that need replacing um, things that can we just change now that we have a bit more room we can change to make a lot better that will make more power but at the end of the day it's sort of relevant it's never yeah, you're be not really concerned about I trying to get no, any sort of it'll have the sound and that's really the key ingredient it's, yep. it doesn't really matter how much power it makes and it's a five litre it's never going to make yeah. power regardless anyway. no. Ooh, but yeah, me, yeah. Me, as a, <laughs> me as a person right is that people that know me this is probably the only modified car that I've actually purchased right most of my I'm a show and shine sort of guy like and I'll be honest with you, I'm a mad, passionate HSV fan. I actually just like cars that are clean, neat and tidy that haven't been fucked with, right? Yeah. Whereas here I am, I've gone to the opposite scale yeah. with this car, but... But ironically, it, you still haven't bought a car to modify. You've bought Psycho yeah, to restore all, Psycho. Yeah. yeah. It's just that it needed to be done to yeah. get it back to how it was. So yeah. you're still not modifying a car in the sense that you've bought a base model car and gone, look, I'm going to do all this shit to it and go mm. crazy. Yeah. We're bought psycho and we want psycho and that's what we're building back because i haven't all the years i haven't really modified a car per se as in yeah i bought cars and i've put big stereos and stuff yeah. in them and you know you might put a set of rims and stuff on yeah. it but i haven't really bolt, done the bolt big, on stuff bolt on stuff hasn't yeah. been the car like what you guys are doing here i was gonna say you stuff. said you watch the channel that's all we do yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we just <laughs> fuck with shit that you shouldn't probably fuck with but i enjoy watching it i yeah. just haven't done it i just yeah it's not my th it's not my thing yeah look if, if you want any words of wisdom don't <laughs> <laughs> just don't well, that's, a, that's a good thing about being where i am now is our shop we we're not limited to anything really yeah. we're limited to people's budgets and conveniently over there we've got people with big budgets that are happy to do here's my car just do whatever you want yeah with their it. limits so their imagination it wasn't a single thing on that one tunnel that we didn't modify for any reason it was there's nothing left original and it was just a, a you know blank canvas to do whatever we wanted and yeah we were limited to the stuff that he had that had to go in it um but just go nuts and make it look you know you can't just take a one toner to some of that and expect it to stand out when it's standard and that was kind of the, the owner is he's stuck in the 80s to a point where he loves his chrome and he loves that old style and everything he wanted to do we kind of undid <laughs> <laughs> so it didn't really end up being the way that he pictured it was supposed to be a white ute with lots of chrome and end up being a red ute with no chrome so but he wouldn't now i said to him when we finished it i said they're looking at it and he's just he sat there on his chair for a good hour and didn't make a noise and we're like so you happy with it and he goes i just can't believe it's mine mm -hmm. and i said to him so is there anything that we've done that you would change now he goes no nothing he goes it's perfect mm. and it's like well you're trying to deal we're trying to build cars for people now that don't have that vision mm. they can't see the finished product where between me and ben my boss we we can sort of see it we know exactly what we're doing and you can picture what it's two different people where you can yeah. sort of you know yeah. you know what you want to see and you're working towards that goal whereas some people they can only see what they've seen yeah yeah, yeah a car so, like a good car build is more than the sum of its parts like you need to have a good idea of the theme and you've got to like everything's yeah, exactly. got to work colors stand yeah. like there's so many different well, ways you can do it can't do that. yeah so exactly yeah we, we've all seen it before where you could have the best components with and drive line and and yep. just real flashy stuff but if it's if it doesn't it stick doesn't together gel. it yep. just it just doesn't hit yep. like it does yeah. you know so it was kind of the i think you said psycho is that we're just doing the same way of what it was like 99 mm. percent of people see it they're going to be like, oh, that's psycho. Mm. And they know exactly how it is. They're not going to really understand looking at it that yeah. the entire tray is built from scratch yeah. recently. Yeah. Pretty much, 
probably 80% of the cab is all new. Like yeah. it's yeah. Just I think it's a blessing, say. honestly, because once it's done, you're not going to, when it's in your little showroom off to the side, you're not going to like see things and go, oh, I don't really like that. Yeah, you know, like that. like you said, it's going to be a recognisable yeah. figure. Yeah. It's still going to trigger that it's same. It's not. It's going to knock foot, like 20 years off you straight away. You're just going to go back to when you first sort of seen it or whenever it was when it came out all those years ago. You're still going to get that feeling, That's right. but it's not going to be like, oh, that looks a bit shit out or this and or that. And not only that, you went, once it's sitting in that little glass box, it's not going to be Jamie's car. You're going to be looking at your car. Yeah. Which, which I mean, Jamie obviously brought that idea to fruition yeah. and he triggers that nostalgia within you from that time, but it's going to be yours. Yeah. I, I still, I think realistic, like the car, like, even though I do own it, right, is that it's more just more a piece mm. is that it brings you back, like you said, 20 or 21. 22. Same as when you jump in one of my old Bogan HSVs and stuff, man. I remember all those laps, cruising around Bono streets, man, you know, tunes cranking, the people you're hanging out with, going down the back beach, man, and, and meeting different people, or going out the back of Jalora up and doing whatever we used to do out there, yeah. you know, the Mad Mile <laughs> and stuff like that. Like it, it makes you feel young again. As, at the end of the day, is it, we're not, none of us are getting any, any younger. No. We're getting oh more grey hairs and all oh that sort of stuff. But for that half an hour you're in that car, you know, it actually it makes you feel like yeah. just it, reminiscing, man. You takes know? you to, takes you back to that place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And, yeah, so, you, and yeah. sometimes when life is that hectic and um, busy and stuff like that, and we and we all get wound up in our own you know own journeys, and sometimes that half an hour driving that car is what you need, mate, just to get you back on track or just to just to de stress. Yeah. yeah, you know, and that's that's one thing I just love about love about these cars you know? yeah yeah each car is just its own experience isn't oh, yeah. it and yeah. yeah yeah that's it the biggest thing i'm looking forward to when it's finished is taking it to a show having it set up and having the people that are our age that know the era and walking up and looking at it closely and seeing it for the first time ish yeah and going this thing's mint mm. like i remember this thing and like, yeah. look at that good, good condition it's still yeah. in they're probably not going to realise that it's just been fully restored. And even the ones that have that know it's fully fully restored, they're going to appreciate it for what it is now. But you know that'll be the the thing that I'll be enjoying the most yeah. is people coming up and going, "Oh, I remember this. This is you know, it's awesome to yep. see it's still here and this condition." And yeah, you get to take them back to that same moment. Yeah. Getting back to how Daryl and I were saying that we never we never saw the Ute in person, right? And now Daryl's got it in person. And it's funny the other day he sent me some photos when we just. Picked up the, he picked up the Momo status, right? And he pulled off, he pulled off the front uh, left hand, front left hand wheel. Um, and he sent me a photo of it. And unknown to me, here is all, in the, like we, we knew, we all knew, I knew that all the under, underside of the car was all airbrushed, right? And it looked mm. amazing. But then unknown to me, in the guards as well, like when you take that when you take that rim off, the wheel lining, the wheel lining been removed, yeah. and then it all been had it all been painted, it all been airbrushed. There's all sorts of stuff that you only saw, that you thought, or, you, or I didn't see it, or hadn't forgotten, or forgotten about it, or whatever. And seeing it is unbelievable. Still right? finding Easter eggs to this day. Yeah, yeah. Man. <laughs> like just well, so I spent a good yeah. hour or so just going over it when I got it. Like I knew what to look for in the sense that the pictures I had in my head were the only pictures that I'd seen mm. of it. So to see different angles. And see different parts and go. Oh, I've never seen that bit before because I've never <laughs> seen the photo of that. Yeah, like it's yeah. When you sent the photo through, the exact photo that you're yeah. talking about with the, I was like, I just in my head said, holy fuck, like <laughs> that's been airbrushed in the like it's just yeah over the top. And Wayne like, laid on his back underneath that on stands that was never on. I don't know if it was on a hoist, but I'm pretty sure Jamie said that he was on his back painting that. So like just damn, like that's just crawl. had it up on stands. That's crazy, and just laid isn't it? Upside down and paint all underneath. Unreal. Like, when you were talking about Wayne before, when you were talking about all the airbrushing and stuff. I didn't want to butt in, but I was thinking, imagine how many hundreds or thousands of hours have gone into this car, like collectively since yep. it was first purchased to right now, yep. it would be absolutely staggering, yep. like yep. on another level, like there probably wouldn't be many cars that have more when you think about no. just all, and, and I'm not talking about all the good hours of making it good, imagine yep. some of the hacks, like they would have spent some time trying to <laughs> yeah. fix shit that they yeah. weren't even, shouldn't oh. have been touching as well, you know, so. I'm pretty sure it was reported that Jamie'd spent 250 grand on it in the... Well, three, four years, three, yeah, it would have been three years you did it. Wow. So I don't know how the, the monetary value came about or the, you know, the number, but I'm guessing because they did it all themselves, they probably kept track of how many hours they did and went, well, this is how much we're worth each hour. I don't know. Just, yeah. I don't think 250 grand literally changed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but also you've got to think like, 
think the stereo, right? Look what a pop out Alpine screen was worth back in the day. They were, they were six grand, weren't they? Something oh, like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah six yeah, grand. Them, yeah. And then, like, it would like, have added up quick. It would, would have added up. Like, there would have been 20 grand easy. If you spent 250 grand on parts, yeah. then. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. well, to put a $20,000 stereo in a car of that era wasn't unheard of, you know, no. and it wasn't difficult to do no, either. Exactly. No. <laughs> yeah. No. But yeah, that was um, when you think about that, those sort of numbers, and then what it came back to, what it sort yeah. of sale for, yeah. and how much we actually got it yeah. for, and yeah. it's like someone's lost a lot of money doing that. But yeah. that's cars. We've had some iconic cars come through the eras, though. Like that one basically owns that early sort of mm-hmm. late '90s, yeah. 2000s. But then, like we move forward, like to Zoltan Bodo's like Senator that yeah. he did, yeah. and then you've got yeah. Chubby's um, VB, VB that he did. Yeah. Like there's just some iconic. Um, cars through that era you know oh huge when i first got it or knew that i was getting it i um obviously having all a heap of mates that are in the same era knowing cars and i'd i'd send a message and say if you had to list the top three commodore U's, vs commodore U's that are memorable from back in the day mm. what would they be and everyone almost everyone said uh the roman autotech yeah psycho and judge i was about to say judge, judge would yeah, have yeah. to be that there for sure that was it was either they'd either say one would be psycho or they'd list those three yeah because yeah. they're, they're all they're different was, they're at different least cars yeah. people would have asked that yeah, yeah. and it's like oh, funny you say that because <laughs> <laughs> it was because we, we didn't want to make it public back then no and i was like oh, i've got to talk to someone yeah because yeah. <laughs> it, to- it was todd wilkes that built judge yeah and he he passed away unfortunately yeah, didn't he yeah. Tolo, yeah so it's funny he after he built that judge car he built a galato Right, which is which actually is like an Alfa Romeo. Yeah. But then it had like a then it had a Holden five liter in it. Yeah. Right? Have you boys ever seen one of them? Yeah. Heard about it? Yeah, yeah. So just recently, I went up to that um, car museum here in Perth, the one um, up north of the river. Oh yeah. They've got they had a yellow one in there. I'd never is seen the one. The one at Whiteman Park. Yeah, Whiteman Park. Yeah. That's if you ever get the time, go up there yeah, and check beautiful. it out. Yeah, beautiful. Did you see Danny Ricardo's F1 car? Yeah, in yeah. There? I saw that as well, man. That's insane. So sick. But that Galato <laughs> is that. I'd never seen one in real life. Unbelievable. And just here we are, we're talking about five litre engines and stuff like that. Like, I'm pretty sure that five litre that he had in that, that was off its head. It's and the, the same, yeah. And the amount of, because it, it was the engine out, was it the engine out of the ute? Like, because that was twin turbo and everything, wasn't it? Twin turbo uh, five litre? I think eventually he did, yeah. Yeah. Was, they standard with five litre in them. Yeah, yeah. Just different manifold, but then he obviously and upped, the, up the game a bit with it. The yeah. power to weight ratio and stuff, yeah. man. Unbelievable. But, you know, like, five litres do. Put out some power if you do, if you do do the right things, Tom. You know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, I mean, I've got one that hopefully will make some power naturally aspirated, but we'll see. Yeah, yeah. You, you've got to remember what, when that the base of that motor right. when it was you know the architecture's from like the late like the fifties and sixties sort of architecture yeah. there. So we we're asking a hell of a lot from an engine that really only had to make a, a couple hundred horsepower, you know. So the it's fact that we're still sound. playing with them, I don't even know how I got stuck with wanting a five litre you know like i don't you know you just don't figure like why am i doing this there's something (laughs) wrong with me sort of thing because it doesn't actually make sense but it goes back to just that feeling of like what certain cars and different combinations like it's just i don't know you just your heart wants what it wants in a way it really does and then you had the guy was it jason gray that had the blown yeah yeah. and he was he he's passed away now. yeah he passed away as well but he's that car broke like the back in the day that one horsepower hero or something But then wasn't there another car that was a five litre that did a thousand? Yeah, so it was Eddie Eddie Tassone. Eddie Tassone, yeah. Yeah, He's birth gone. Yep, and then there was Rapid 8 as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, There there was a couple that sort of did the 1300 odd wheel horsepower. That was the, yeah, that they were duking it out pretty heavily at that point. Um, Pretty famous story of the 1300 horsepower, Hmm. like horsepower hero competition where. Hidden nitrous. Yeah, hidden nitrous, and then Eddie ripped the intake manifold off his engine and told everyone to suck it. (laughs) (laughs) But yeah, nah, pretty interesting. Yeah. It's good being in Orange now because Canberra's only three hours away. Yeah. Until I moved there, I'd never been to Summonats, and now I sort of get to go every year, so. Something that uh, I'm hoping to do. I still haven't done it. You did uh, Summon Ats 30. Have you 30. been to a Summon Ats, Troy? No. No? So that, and you wants the Ute to be first. Yeah. yeah. I, I, so that I, I, <laughs> no yeah. pressure. <laughs> so, yeah, I will go once the Ute's there, and that was always my plan. It was always, you know, there was always a plan to get the Ute finished and go to Summon Ats and just and, and, That'll and, be pop, your and pop the cherry sort of thing, as yeah. they say. But last year, watching, like, on YouTube, it looked, like, pretty off its head, eh? Yeah. Like it's definitely yeah, it's starting to get a little wild. bit more rowdy again. Yeah. I think when I went in 30, that they've sort of... And this is just me speculating but i think they've sort of tamed it down when they when the new people purchased it yeah. and it got fairly it was fairly tame when i was there yeah. and now i think it's starting to 
take that transition it's, back the other way the, again. It's not the entire show like that, though. It's a certain no, time that's right. And it's a certain spot. So yeah, exactly. Yeah. Being there every year, it's mm. you know where to avoid. That's yeah. right. But or go if yeah. that's what you're after. It depends yeah, or, who you're with be, and what yeah. you're doing. But the the normal videos of normal summer nats aren't the ones that get the clicks. So the ones no, that get right. hammered are the ones yeah. where everyone's the playing security up. Security bar guards are beating yeah. everyone up. Yeah. Or back, you know, when we were, you know, 19, 20 or whatever, the old boobs and burnouts, mate. Like yeah. I always used to watch them. You go, you go down the puppy C- car wash. Yeah, yeah. Or you go, to, <laughs> you go to the Civic video in town there, mate. You get a whole heap, you know, come back on, you know, buy a pizza and a few beers and watch them, you know. They were, yeah. They were, they were the shit, you know. Yeah, times have certainly changed from then. Oh, yeah. For yeah. sure. Yeah. On the, uh, the show thing with the Ute where she spoke to um, Owen Webb, who does, who's in charge of all the un- unveils yep. at Summer Nats. And um, I... Thought I'd just, while he was while I was there, I said I said to him, oh, apparently you're the man to speak to about unveils. And he said, yeah, yeah. He said, well, what do you got? And I showed him a photo of the Ute, and he kind of looked at me and said, is that Jamie's? And I said, well, it's not anymore. I said, but it's sitting in my shed and it's getting a full resto. I said, is that something that you'd be interested in maybe unveiling? I know it's not a, you know, it's not an unveil, uh, you know, top twenty car or whatever, but mm. it's something that's people haven't seen that. No, he's coming, but we it's can unveil it to, you know, and to me, it's it's a, a side um, little niche that I get guaranteed to have it in the hall because mm. we don't want to turn up with it and then get stuck outside with it. It's not the car that I want to leave outside. No. Nah. So he jumped at the chance. He said, yep, buddy. I say to know that when it is finished, we can have it in the hall. It takes a lot of pressure off. We can take the display. We can build a display to, you know, the period correct. Yeah. Um, and we can get there and know that we can set up and it's going to be done. So beautiful. Um, the unveil won't be something that no one has ever seen before, but at the same time, it's just cool to be able to go, ta-da, we finished it sort of thing. So yeah. Brought it back. Yeah. yeah. So I, I can't, there's no chance I'm going to get it done this year to be able to unveil it next year. But, you know, we, if that's what our first show is, then that would be pretty cool. But we'll just keep working away wherever I can to get it done. But, it's it wouldn't it's not exactly snowballed but it's certainly we're doing a lot more than what <laughs> needed to be done to get it back to what it was yeah, yeah. but there's so also probably better. A, there's probably a lot that needed to be done that you didn't realize needed to be done as yeah. well that's um, the other thing there's a lot there's a lot of things that were sort of missing like i knew exactly what i was in for um i knew it was low kilometers and it was exactly how I expected to get it, I'd, yeah. I'd say. Um, but then knowing how much work it was to kind of rebuild the whole back wall. Like, we wanted to put the eyeball subs in there, but the original ones were 12-inch ZRs, I think. And the seat sat eight inches further forward than where you, it's supposed to be. Yeah. And Jamie said, and Jamie's not exactly, it wasn't tall. And he's not a big guy and he said he didn't even fit in there oh yeah and Troy's 6 to 2 or 3 or something yeah. Yeah. He's got those practical. VSU cabs are not like <laughs> goes, they're, they're like borderline the back in I'm like eh. <laughs> so now today the slim bonus line. is we've got slimline subs yeah. so I started doing some measuring and maths and I was like I can do it and the seats have 100% travel and they're Perfect. limited compared to a sedan anyway yeah mm-hmm. that's so right so to have full travel he's sat in it with those subs yeah. in there and it looks identical to a point they're only 10s now instead of 12s the, th- um, the theme is still there like really isn't it no there, one's going to see it looks it exactly the same yep. um, and now if you slide the seats forward the entire back wall is trimmed the roof's done everything in the in-cab is now to a show standard not just the bits, the bits you, can you can see, see. through the window from a distance so mm. yep. that's where the, the time difference has come from being just built it how it was and look the same yep. to being something that we can take to a show and people don't say to Troy why didn't you do this bit? Like, yeah. 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 So, or walk off going, fuck, that looks a bit so average. But when, original, when... We never really set a schedule on when nah. you know, we wanted to have it finished anyway. It would be nice if it was already done. But it's I've got to do it between having a full-time job and mm. having a property with 20-odd animals that I've got to run as well. So <laughs> finding a time. And then you've got orange winters, which you know minus four, minus oh. five. You can't fiberglass in that. Yeah. <laughs> so we're very, very seasonal in orange. So that changes again. Uh, how much time you can actually work on it you get home at 5 30 it's pitch black and i've got a tiny shed nowhere to work like there's lots of excuses i can come up with but <laughs> oh don't re- worry we've reality, got plenty of our yeah, own if you yeah. need any more just hit me up <laughs> the reality yeah. is i can't get home at night and spend three four hours every night working on it no it's the dream it would be nice and i'd love to say to try look i'm you know it's going to be finished in six months time we're going to be done but there's just too many factors that the tunnel was the main one that the last three months before summer that's we the boss committed to getting the tunnel done and 
the only way that was going to get done was for me to be working 12 hour Saturdays and then obviously the whole Christmas break and, yeah. you know, and I said to her look unfortunately we've committed to this tunnel we've spent four years building it we have to get it to this show I'm not going to get a single minute to spend on yours but I, I don't really so, but I've never really cared to be perfectly honest it's like yeah. mate when it's done it's done it's the yeah. journey which is I've been watching the, the car bonus. for 20 odd years like what's yeah. another few more years going yeah. you know, yeah. yeah. you've yeah. driven it once and you hated it you can yeah, wait yeah, yeah that's right, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> so to be able to do the videos and continue sending photos and videos of the progression I think is probably the more enjoyable part than yeah, just yeah that's right you're getting a little you're getting Easter eggs it. as you go yeah. Yeah. just going oh you used to come pick it up yeah you the know, best part is, is that you've got that for life too. Oh. Even when when you've got it there and it's in your lounge room, you can be sitting there watching the videos and reliving every moment. Well, hopefully it gets to the lounge room. Hopefully it gets the, you know that shed yeah. that shed set up in the house. Hopefully you manifest, know. mate. Manifest. So I've got time because you've got the shed or the house. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, it's, uh, when there's a vacant spot, he keeps taking a photo saying there's no use in this spot. Then I'm yeah. really like, oh yeah, finish it. <laughs> One thing that did blow me away, right, is that car builders um, installation. Yeah. So we put so Daryl's pretty much done the whole cab of that. Unbelievable. Two or three times. Yeah, unbelievable that product. The underneath the car is tin. Yeah. Completely stripped back. So Oof. the whole floor is painted so there's no sand in it underneath it whatsoever. Oh, yeah. And you can just like, Daryl's like, when I went over there, so I'm mad into V8 supercar racing. That's my, that's, that's my motorsport that I love following, right? So every October I go over to, I go over to Bathurst and I always pull in and stay at Daryl's. Da stop, stop at Daryl's and have a look at the thing. And It's only 40 minutes between yeah. Bathurst and Orange so it's a quick, I can mm. literally pick him up go home have a look at it go back to the racing so yeah of course cool. so it works out well and daryl's like check this out so he, he he showed me a section with all the with the car builders edna in right we knocked on it and like unbelievable it's amazing and stuff. then you then you go on a panel with nothing like just it's like chalk and cheese mate yeah unbelievable yeah. I, i've i've never I've never come across, like you look at back in the day when, you know, doing stereos and stuff like that, there was nothing like this around. Like, the, I, I just can't speak highly enough of that product. And then when Daryl had the, you know, had the stereo rigged up, so I jumped in there, we cranked it up. <laughs> and the sound, the quality just, you know, back in the day, you used to crank the old 12s up, mate, and the number plate would rattle, this would rattle, yeah. this would rattle. You're separating the boot skin off the oh, structure and stuff like that. This never did any of that. It yeah. was unbelievable. Beautiful. It just, it was just... It was amazing. Plenty yeah. story about the subs. When we were initially laying out what we wanted to put back into the tray and I worked out with Nathan what we needed and what I wanted to do and the stuff that you can't see, we got the modern stuff so that I knew that that was going to work and it would be to the best of sound. So if he does want to listen to it, it's sick. You know, the old stuff, it's going to work, but it's not going to be the best Yeah. It's in comparison. Um, so Troy originally had two, sorry, Jamie originally had two 12-inch subs hidden next to the fuel tank underneath and Troy, we, we found that in many of the stories so we knew that's what it was even though we had no photos of it you couldn't see it yeah but Troy's like we put two 12s in I said there's not enough room I said there's no point I said one 10 inch sub in there in a box I'll fire it through I yeah. said it's going to be 10 times better than any two 12s that are going to it's not going to work the, the maths of knowing car audio I was going to say the, the key work. is in the enclosure yeah. yeah and he's like oh do you think it'll be enough and I went it'll be enough put a 10 in a band pass and enclosure. it was more than once that he said oh do you think do you think we should go two 12s I said just I'm happy. Look, I've got the 10. Let me build the box. I'll get it all up and running when you come at Bathurst and I'll have it ready to go and you can listen to it. If you think it's not enough, I'll happily pull it out and I'll get two 12s and we'll redo it. Oh, all right then. Turns up. Had it up and running. Turned it on. Sitting there, his eyes just started, started watering a little bit and he goes, oh, that's pretty good. <laughs> I said, do you want me to turn this up now? He goes, bullshit. So he's turning up and up and he goes, okay, yeah. <laughs> fair enough, you win. <laughs> But it's funny, speaking of Nathan, right, because I'm a Bummery boy, all the star, all the car audio that I ever had, I've always purchased through Nathan yeah. and then even got it installed and stuff like that. But the reason why I was so sceptical about the 10-inch subs, right, so some good friends, um, they don't live in Bummery anymore, they had back in the day, well, they still got the car actually, an EL XR8, a red one, beautiful car. And then Nathan sold them a stereo system and it had, he's still got the Pioneer deck and it's got like the fish and all that sort yeah, of stuff. Yeah, the like dolphins. Yeah, yeah, dolphins, that's it. Yeah. Still originally in the car. And then they fitted um, the base bullet splits and um, et cetera in the car. And then there was two base bullet 10 inch subs. He said, the 10s, these are going to be great. We put them in there and I was like, this thing sounds shit. It wasn't powerful enough, right? It wasn't, the, the subs weren't big enough. So we went to the 12 inches, right? And I always remember that. And then Daryl's like, oh, we need. Here we are, we're talking two 10 inch subs, and uh, two 12 inch subs, and then he's like, Oh, no, one 10 will be enough. I'm like, I always remember that, yeah. Yeah. that story, right? And then it's like, and, there was, and then when 
when I listened to it, it was like my mind changed dramatically. Yeah. <laughs> It's a different cab space, different enclosures, different yeah. 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 <laughs> But you know, you know when you always, like, oh, yeah. you always try to, yeah. Yeah, yeah, when you have experience in certain. Hundred like, percent. Like, so, do you attribute that to the um, like the sub technology, or is it just the fact that you knew how to build an enclosure that was more I suited knew to what a box would work? It's it come down to the box a lot. Yeah. Um, yeah. You could put any ten inch sub in there really, and it would would have been seen enough. Exactly the same. Yeah. There's nothing special about the ten inch. Yeah. It's a decent yeah. Rockford ten inch sub. Um, but it's also got a fair bit of power going to it, which mm. doesn't need that much. It's, it's probably mm. more based on what the speakers in the front can handle. But, you know, as a balance, I can set it up to be the best sound that I know it can have. So it's, a, it's now a listenable system on any genre of music you want to have. Yeah. But if you want to have the bass, you just keep turning it up and up and up. So I just have to change your name now to Cal SQL. <laughs> we're going, we're going no, no, it's a ported box. It'll never, <laughs> it'll never be SQL, don't worry. And then, as you know, everything now is all Bluetooth, etc. Mm. So, back in the day, it was all CDs, right? So, what Daryl's done even is that's the even the head unit's not the factory screen. That's not the, the Alpine screen's not even a CD unit. It's just a slave screen. Yeah, oh, right. So it had the DVD player underneath it. So, so Daryl's worked his magic, and he's I don't know how he's done it, but <laughs> now we can actually Bluetooth music to the sound system. Perfect. So, so pretty much you'll be able to go to a show. Now he's got like, he's put... I didn't tell him that. So he turned up and I've got my phone. I'm like, yeah. what's this? And I yeah. press play and all of a sudden he started playing. He's like... It's on a Bluetooth yeah, receiver. Yeah, so yeah, that sort of stuff. And now um, it's got, we've added dual batteries into it, into the car. Which yeah, the car so the battery was always in the engine bay and that was the main... Once you start moving the battery of the engine bay, you might as well get rid of all the wiring. So yeah. yeah. That was, whether or not Troy wanted it, was always on my agenda to get rid of the battery into the tray and then get rid of all the wiring. And even if we put, you know, shiny stainless panels back in to cover the engine <laughs> bay, still, yeah. Like, but that was... That, that was, was the was, thing back see, then, See, Jamie's, yeah. him and his dad's business is um, metal, sheet metal... Fabrication. I, I, I don't think it's, it's not even... Well, yeah, fabrication, but it's not, you know, like car fabrication. Yeah. It's Let, just, let's be real. That's what was done back then. It wasn't exactly. until Chubby and, and all those guys the, started wrecking it for everyone doing these immaculate bays. That's why it's got <laughs> the steel floors and all the stainless polish. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. That, that's where it comes from. That yeah. is their business. So, you know, it seems logical that that's why they would have all those pieces there. They're not all that sparky, so they're not going to hide all the wiring. Exactly. So the engine harness itself was sort of hidden. It was run through the scuttle and kind of hidden a bit, but... Even then, it was not the best. So there was they obviously reached the limitations of what they could either do, a time wise, or b what their skill set was. Um, I'm just lucky that my skill set's probably more than what they had available in the time period, I suppose. Yeah. So you know, we've, I've managed to hide all that wiring and everything, and now the engine bay is completely clear of everything but an engine. Have you done the the, the proprietary? Um, Cal SBL fuse box down in the in the kick panel there yeah. in the drop. Yeah. That that thread with oh. that how to is is a lost. It's a lost thing now. It's a relic. Yeah, it needs to come back. We I need to get it because a lot of people sure could have used that. that oh like, no doubt. I still remember it and yeah. it's gone. It, that whole forum's gone oh, now. I've got it all sucks. The photos. It's all good. <laughs> <laughs> we just need to start another forum and then we're good. Yeah. I've got thousands and thousands of photos on the computer that of all that sort of stuff that I did yeah. back then because there were so many people that wanted to do it and through forums, it, you know. You, that was the only way they were going to see it was obviously putting photos up yeah, yeah. Um, and it was that that era of the forums it was the VS era of the, the car that was the thing to modify that yeah. you know the rest of the VT's VX didn't even exist yet so yeah that was a pretty big one back then so yeah yeah I, de I definitely remember it mm. remember it vividly well we've taken about two hours of your time gentlemen that went quick though didn't it yeah it doesn't feel like it it, it felt like right We've known each other all for years, yeah. and we're just, you know, we're just like just reconnecting about certain time and places, and yeah. this car and that car. I, I think I've enjoyed myself. Too. That's cool. That's the best part about a podcast. If you took these microphones away, it'd feel exactly the same. Yeah. yeah. The only thing we, yeah, the only thing we're missing is a couple of swan, swanny days, mate. Yeah, that's mate, yeah. There's probably one left in the fridge, <laughs> I reckon, from when. And the topless bar, mate. <laughs> <laughs> that can be arranged. All right. <laughs> I think it's time that we wrap it up. We can continue the conversation later, but. Um, as far as the podcast goes, that's it. Thanks heaps for joining us, guys. Especially no yourself, Daryl, coming all the way over from, yeah, from no, Orange. Jump back on the plane and head home again now. Another yeah, I was going to say, yeah. He came especially for the yeah, podcast, guys. Flew him in. <laughs> 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 thanks yeah. for your time, Troy. And thanks for sharing the story with us, man. It's, I greatly appreciate it, man. It's, right. um, yeah. And it's great to meet you. And yeah, like I say, we'll, we'll keep chatting after this. Anyway. Yeah. For sure, yeah. I feel... Um, 
it's really special to have like some like quality guests. We've had quality conversation mm. for our very first podcast with guests. We sort of set the standard pretty high, I think. So, yeah. and how good you're just down the road, mate. Yeah. That's it, man. Yeah. I can't believe I'm in Bunbury, mate. Like, <laughs> back to back to my roots, you know. Yeah. A couple of lads, you know. It's, yeah. Um, I can't believe we haven't crossed paths before. True that. Yeah. Because we're all about the same vintage, I suppose. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> For sure. Well, if I'd still not been over here, we definitely would have crossed paths at Motivation, but no doubt. I think I finished up in the in the golden era of what it was justified to come down from Kegley for. We used yeah. to come down still, but it certainly wasn't bringing all the cars we used to and have of the rock star days of um, enjoying it. It yeah. certainly changed a lot. <laughs> well guys if you'd like to support the potty you can jump on the website talkhub.com.au and get yourself some merch uh, stay tuned for a mini series coming up we're doing something a little bit different fizzy way way different actually. way 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 different that's coming up but uh, thanks for helping us get back into it boys after our technical difficulties no, no problem we'll uh, get back into the swing of things and uh, you'll get another podcast next month until then we'll catch you around see ya thank you bye Excellent. That's bang awesome. on two hours. You wouldn't think it, eh? <laughs> Fuck, I reckon we could go on for another two hours oh, just talking oh, shit. You'll never out talk me, dude. I was going to say, you, can't you won't out talk me, bro. I could talk for fucking hours and hours and hours.